Hello ladies and gentlemen, Friend Stack here, and welcome to the start of a brand new campaign series. For we are playing, as has been voted for, the Dwarfs of Erebor. A faction and a people that I have long been in love with since the days of the Hobbit films and the books. Well not since the books, I wasn't born then. But I have recently, in recent months, actually uh, read The Hobbit, um, finally. And, um, and yeah, ever since reading The Hobbit and generally reading... And the films, obviously, since they've been out for, what, nearly 10 years now? Or well, the Battle of Five Armies has come since it's been out for nine years, almost. Um, and ever since those films, I've loved Erebor. I've loved the Dwarfs of Erebor. And I've also just loved the Dwarfs an awful lot. So as you can imagine, I am absolutely thrilled to be playing as the Dwarfs of Erebor. We had a faction vote, as you may, many of you will, of course, remember. And the Dwarfs of Erebor won the vote. Uh, in second place came the Art of the Nime, which, yeah, fair enough, they're quite a popular faction. I can understand why they were quite high on the voting list. And in joint third place was the Veil of Dorwinian, which is I'm not, which I quite like anyway, so I'm, I'm keen. They're, they're a choice script with the evil, the evil. But the Elven and Men choice, I think, is just such a unique idea, and I like it. Um, and then the next one was the Realm of Minas Morgul, which was definitely a surprise. Version 3, Dactylus is as well. Um, so seeing them in the voting poll was quite a surprise, actually. Um, and then Lothlorien as well came uh, in joint third as well, which was interesting to see. Uh, of all the other Elven factions, Lothlorien won out, so I was quite interested to see that was the case. Now, there's something I wanted to do, and moving forward, this is probably going to be a thing for most of the videos on this channel. Um, I did contemplate doing intros again, and I didn't do intros because I just felt as if I'm going to burn myself out of them. If I do intros, I will run out of time and I will burn out. I can see it happening. So I'm just not going to attempt it. However, there is something I wanted to do. And I may be slightly controversial. It may be met with a lot of disdain and disgust. And I'd be keen to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you think it, if you like this or if, if you like it, you prefer it, want, it for, want for it to carry on. Or are you just happy for my current intro? However, my current intro is something I've been doing for quite a very long time now, which has been my Hello ladies and gentlemen, friend stack here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've done that for a while and it's sort of inspired by, by uh, Soul Games Inc. It's the way he introduces his videos. But Soul also does that as well and I'm actually, you know, I actually know Soul. I've done a few videos with him. Um, more so on his channel, but he hasn't uploaded them yet. But um, I know him, so I feel like every time I'm using that intro, I'm sort of copying him. And I don't mean in any way to copy intros. I... I've always just stuck with what I feel comfortable saying the video as. I find myself before I start the video thinking, oh god, how do I want that to sound? Um, but I'm just going to go with what I feel like I want to do for the next intro. So I'm going to stop to stop with the Hello Ladies and Gentlemen from the Stag thing. That's going to stop. And I'm instead going to go back to an old intro. An intro some of you will of course know. Some of you Divide and Conquer fans will heavily know and heavily recognise. And some may also feel like I'm copying him. Now that is not my intention. I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to copy his intro. Now the intro that I'm going to use is an intro used by Araki Galadurathon. And he was the head of Divine and Conqueror for about, forgotten how many years? Seven, eight years now, I think. Um, and obviously he's now no, no longer with us in YouTube. I mean, he's still alive. I think he's still alive anyway. But he's no longer with us on YouTube anyway. Um, and he had a very good intro that I was really liking. It was in Elvish. Um, I'm not sure if it's Quenyan or... or or um, Sindarin, I'm not quite sure. I think Sindarin. But, um, and his intro was My Gavanan, Melanin, and Well Met Indeed. And I always really liked that intro because it just it just felt like very. And you can say it in many different ways. You can say it in a very in a few enthusiastic way. You can say it in a very monotone way. But, or you can just say it normally. But I always liked that intro. And, and I, when, when Galu left, I had no intention to use his intro. But, as time has gone on, and it's become obviously clear to us now that Gally will not probably come back to YouTube, which is a shame, because I really enjoyed his content myself. <laughs> and it is, of course, a shame that he will no longer come back. Um, I even watched his, like, goodbye video again, just, to, just because I wasn't, you know, I wanted, didn't want to use his intro and be like, yeah, he's coming back. So I watched the video again, and it's pretty clear from that video he will not be returning to YouTube. And I can understand his reasons. Reasons that I myself have also struggled to put the time in for YouTube. And, um... One day I wonder if I may <laughs> depart YouTube the same way because of the reasons that he, um, of course, stated. But that time has not come. And I have no intention of stepping down anytime soon. 
So, I'm going to go ahead and use an intro, which, as far as I'm aware, is means, um, hello and well met, my friend. Um, that's the My Gavon and Melanine thing. Um, hello and well met, my friend, to what I understand. <laughs> now, I'm no expert, so if anyone in the comment section wants to correct me, please do. Uh, and I'm keen to know the pronunciation if I'm wrong. I also want to use this outro, which is Navara Den Palamine Melanine, which I don't know if I'm quite got getting the pronunciation right. But again, feel free to correct me in the comment section. I absolutely want to rely on the support. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm doing the intro with justice. I spoke with, of course, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine who's been the support of the channel for quite some time now. Uh, even since 2020, I think, back when I started doing Hot Seats, he was like one of the first people that joined. Um... Unfortunately, I can't remember what faction he played in that first ever hot seat, but I have no idea. But um, he said uh, to me, um, he thinks it would be a great idea to carry it on. Because otherwise, because no one else is using that intro uh, from what I've seen. Unless someone else is using it, but I've never seen anyone use it before um, in any of the playthroughs I've seen. Um, and I had a little look through because I didn't see any. Um, and he said, if you want to use it, I would explain its meaning. And that's what I've done. So, and now the outro, I'm afraid I don't white hunts that know what it means entirely i have think it means like goodbye my friends until we meet again or something like that but again i'm not 100 sure so again if you know let me know but um by far as i'm aware it means uh, farewell and in his last video he made i he said something about like the outro usually tends to mean about him returning um and he just said farewell so obviously it wasn't uh so i don't know what quite exactly the outro means so again if you know let me know but i just wanted to talk about that and um and again i want to keep it alive i don't want to i don't want the intro and outro to fade away into the nothingness of the void of this world um that sounds really complicated isn't it? but uh, i want to carry it on basically and that is what i'm going to do i know many of you will pos there might be some of you that might not like it some of you may dislike the video because of it um but i don't care I want to carry it on because I want to carry it on. I like it. I like the intro. Gally is no longer around anymore. And uh, you know, I think he, he'd be happy that someone would carry on his intro and outro. In the same way, he's happy that someone's carried on um, the things that he did when he left. Such as the, the mod itself. Uh, Divide and Conquer. Um, the videos. <laughs> so Let's Plays and what I've carried on since he's left. And the fact and overviews that have been carried on by uh, Sir Orgrimmund, I believe. Um... So I feel as if he, I've never met the guy, so, you know, he's, he, we're never going to cross paths ever again, I should imagine. But I feel as if he would be at least content to know that the intro and outro has been carried on. And I wish to do that justice. And uh, yeah, which I, I, my main idea of that, and I know I've gone on for a little while, but I want to keep it going. And so I'm going to carry on. So let's do it. My Gavana Mernin and well met indeed. So. Um, let's go on with the actual video then, shall we? I'm sorry I bored you all to death with that, but here we are. The Dwarves of Erebor and I am thoroughly excited to be playing as them. Um, of course, they won the vote, so that's pretty damn clear. Uh, quite a few people voted, so again, I'm grateful for all the votes there. So thank you all very much for everyone who voted. I'm looking forward to jumping into it. Now, I have added, as of course, as many of you are familiar with, me, with my videos, I have added, gone ahead and added in some custom gem rules for the mod. I've added in a total of, well, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, nine custom generals. Um, there are a few custom generals that have been added in with the sub mod that I'm using. I'll talk more about that in a second. But essentially, I what I will do for these custom generals, because in the Kazadoom campaign, we had them all in one go. Um, so what we are going to do instead to make it a bit more better is that we're going to have these generals come in at certain turns. Now, Glory and Gimli come first, because Glory and Gimli actually tied in with a, a, um, a ring script. And so that's why they're coming in a bit earlier, because obviously they go off eventually later on to do this, to take part in the script. Um, so that's... Excuse me. So that's, um, so that's of course, what, uh, what, why I want them in a bit earlier. So basically what I've done is, is next to each of the custom generals, I put a number. As you can see, I've gone ahead in the wheel spinner, and I've done a number, and I've gone down that number list. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, I've gone ahead in the number list, and I've put a number basically next to the generals that will come in. So, uh, each turn up to turn 80, a general will come in. And then I will use a second wheel spinner to decide where that general, like, will I teleport that general to. Because I haven't done campaign scripts, because I'm kind of a bit nervous to really jump into the campaign scripting 
I worry that I might break something, so I didn't. Um, I'm going to go another way and I'll show you that in the campaign. But, um, so every turn, for the next 10 turns, the general will spawn in up until turn 90. Now our victory conditions for the Dwarfs of Erebor is to eliminate uh, the Rune, Gundabad and the Goblins of Moria. So in addition to generals coming under 90, 100 and 110, they, the requirement is also the death of that faction. So Rune has to be dead, Gundabad has to be dead and the Goblins have to be dead as well. So, and eventually by about turn 110, despite the... Obviously going by the fact that we should have hopefully killed Rune and Gundabad and the Goblins by then, probably not. <laughs> we might still be halfway there, but who knows. Um, my secondary goals for this campaign, in addition to the victory uh, conditions, because I always find that my campaigns... I, I was looking at the Kazadim campaign, I felt this, but it could have gone a bit longer, on a bit longer. Like I could have fought Dunn and I could have fought Isengard, but I didn't. So instead, this time around, I'm going to. Um, maybe not on Isengard and Dunnan, because I'm going to be I'm fighting them quite a lot in my Athelmore campaign. So I'm going to look towards the east, and I might, depending on if Can goes good or evil, we might fight them, and we might fight Mordor and Dol Guldur. Now, whether or not we go any further south, I don't know. Harad and you know, Nine are miles away, so who the hell knows? We might do. Depends if like, how enjoy enjoy much I'm enjoying the series. Uh, so yeah. So with these custom generals then, I have allowed you the option to basically, I need to actually uh, drag my Discord uh, tab because I need to show you something on there. So in the description of the video, you will find four links. The first link will be Divide and Conquer 4.6. So I forgot to actually get these up. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, anyway. Let me just uh, drag Discord over here a minute. There you go. So, the first order of thing you will need to for to have these custom files that I've made. Um, there's my million DAC folders there. But, <laughs> so, you will need the Violent Conquer version 4.6. So, you need to install that. Uh, once that's been installed, uh, you need to then install the... Oh, God, dear. The, you need to go to the AGO submon. I'll leave a Discord link in the description. Go to the download mod section and click on the uh, whichever one of those doesn't matter. Click on one of those. Um, if you have an issue with the DAC 4.6 installation, you will find the link uh, if you look it up. I think there's a video actually it should show you. But uh, maybe not. Uh, there's an installation guide by Gallo. He's done one. So check that out if you have any issues. It's pretty simple though. It's not hard to install with really. I understand other people can have issues with it. So it's completely understandable. But for me, I've been installing mods for... I, I have about how many? 95 items? 95 mods, so I've been, you know, I'm very well versed in installing mods at this point. I remember a time where I couldn't actually install mods once, so mods would never work for me, but, uh, but actually they do. Uh, they do now, they have worked, well that was years ago, um, 10 years ago now, but now of course they work, it's funny to think about that time. The next one you'll find, which will be the link in the description, which is quickly just go through swan stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing's confidential, surely. But then you want to go ahead and install, once you've installed AGO, install the Dwarfen TLC version 2.0 beta. Now, my thanks go out to Swan for offering me and giving me this, um, the, these uh, early access files. Well, basically, he is carrying on the Dwarfen TLC, which is a Dwarfen 10, 11 care submod. But he's basically, he's moving it over to version 5 of DAC and he's going to carry it on from there. Um, and... Um, and yeah, so of course these beta files where he gave them to me himself, so out of his own volition. So I do thank him a lot for that. The Dwarfman, basically you drag the data folder into the AGO, the Divide and Conquer AGO 1, overwrite, that's essentially the installation. Pretty simple. Again, thank you to Swan, thank you to the AGO team, and thank you again to DAC for all the their hard work, and for allowing me the possibility of this campaign working. The next file is the Erebor mod files itself. This is the files you need, the ones that I've edited myself. So, so yeah, press download and you will come up in WinRAR or 7-zip, whichever you have. And it will pop up in a WinRAR, in a RAR file. And inside you have Erebor mod files. So you have a bunch of these to add in and, you, and I'll show you which one, where they go. Uh, so first one then, you go to the data folder and you scroll down to where it should say... Uh, desk R... I'm going to get to it in a minute. Oh, no, I'm going past it. Yeah, let's go names. Uh, so once you, so you basically drag it over to this file, click, let it go through, and then press overwrite. 
And um, once you press over right, of course, then of course it it will work. <laughs> um, and then you go into the next one, which is data, and then into the text file, and you drag in expanded and names using Control to select both of them, and drag them over to into the te text folder. Press over right once again, and they will be in the game. Th that's basically the so the expanded names and the name file were basically just changing the names of and adding the new names of generals in that I've added in. And expanded is the name of the faction that I changed for Erebor, and I'll show you that. And you'll notice that on the thumbnail that we are called the Fragments of Erebor and not so much the Dwarfs of Erebor. And you'll understand. And as time goes on, eventually we'll call ourselves the Kingdom of uh, Erebor, and the thumbnail will update. Uh, which is what I did my Khazad-Doom campaign. You may recall I had the expedition bit, and then I changed the thumbnail to the Kingdom of Khazad-Doom, and that is something I wanted to carry on for this. It's something I am doing for the Aphamore series as well. So I've got, got two of those. Uh, so the next one then is the UI. Oh, I've gone past it. <laughs> so go into UI, go into Custom Portraits. Oh, no, no, sorry. No, yeah, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, click on Custom Portraits. Actually, no, you should just be able to... Yeah, what we're we talking about. Just uh, drag this into the into UI, and then it will click override, and it will add in your new portraits, uh, which I've made for the uh, for, for the certain characters in the game. Then the, the final one, I don't know why I come out of that, but the final one anyway, is the death strap, which is the main one you need. Um, it's the one you need for everything to work. So once you're done, so just drag that over to the camp Imperial campaign, and press override, and the files will be there. If you have any issues with it, just let me know. But essentially, that should be it. There shouldn't be any issues. Um, and also, it's always recommended to you, uh, before you start up the game, you run the full cleaner first. And then once that's done, click DAC and then load it up. Um, and if you can't use EOP for whatever reason, then just load up that by that way. Um, I don't know if that's gonna, still going to work, though, because it's a different DAC file. But I imagine it will. But uh, but I recommend just use a DAC one. Um, so, yeah. So, that hopefully, uh, hopefully, with that installation guide out of the way... That will hopefully allow you to figure out how to install uh, my files. And now I feel as if we are finally, after this lengthy introduction, don't worry, I'm going to make the video a bit longer today to allow for this long uh, intro. But but I hope you guys like the idea of my reasoning for the using Gallows intro um, and generally just, just my thoughts on that really. And of course, if you know the full translations, I'd be keen to know entirely what they are because I did try and look them up, but I couldn't really... I couldn't find them, unfortunately. I just n nothing really would come up. I guess when you search Elvish into the uh, into Google, it comes up as gibberish, really, doesn't it? Because it's not it's not a real language. <laughs> so yeah, I still think El Elvish is a very good language, though. But um, but there you go. But that is all. So we will jump in. I <laughs> sounded like I'm ending the episode. Isn't it? No, <laughs> no. Right. Without further ado, let's jump in. I'll show you all the things that I've done and changed um, for you all, and I'll explain a bit more about the backstory. I won't go on too long, but essentially, I mean, there's a lot of to explain anyway, so I'm just gonna... If the video is like two hours long, it's two hours long, sod it. <laughs> I mean, my cousin in video, actually, how long was that? That was... I recall that being a very long... Um... Oh, hang on. I, I recall that being a very long first episode, actually. Let me quickly just find it for you. I'm related, I know, you can just fight yourselves, but, um, yeah, so, the, yeah, 2 hours and 37 minutes, my, I'll show you, <laughs> yeah, 2 hours and 37 minutes, my first episode of Kaz Doom, um, if I go any longer, it'll be up to about 2 hours or an hour and 45 minutes, so I won't go that long, that was, that's crazy time, um, I don't have that kind of time these days to sit there for 2 hours, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, whatever, anyway, let's get into it. Okay, here we are. Let's just make sure the audio is alright. Now, in my um, <laughs> Empire campaign lately, the this audio late late has been getting triggered by the copyright so much that I've had to like spend like several hours editing out the music or with the YouTube system, which just takes forever to do. Um, so hopefully this won't be a repeat of that. Check my settings are okay. Yeah, that's fine. And that's fine. Perfect. Okay, we should be good. Right. It feels weird seeing the AJ screen. I haven't seen it in a while. So here we are. War of the Ring. And here we are. The Fragments of Erebor. Now, the starting position has been changed quite a fair bit. 
And there's also some new, more, because I'm using the Dwarf and Submon, which adds in a few things. Uh, some things we will see, uh, that we have seen before with our Kazdim campaign. Mainly the custom general that we get for completing the Dwarf and Grudges script will still, will still occur. So, um, so there's a chance that our, we will still, we will of course get the custom general with the Hammers of Gundabad for Erebor. As we got with Kazdim, we get him again. Same name, same general, it's basically the same guy. Uh, regardless of what Dwarf and Faction you play as, you will always get him. As he'll be called Kazador, same portrait, same, just generally the same as you would get any other Dwarf and campaign. He's not different. <laughs> um, he's not unique anyway. But we are playing as the Fragments of Erebor. Erebor has, is not the kingdom we remember from a normal Third Age. The kingdom has been battered and has been put under siege by the forces of Sauron. Hence why I want to go kick his ass later. <laughs> because I haven't fought Mordor in a while. Our leader is, of course, King Dane, second Ironfoot, and his heir, Lord Thorin III, Stonehelm. Now, Thorin does eventually succeed Dane as King of the Mountain in after the events of the, well, around the time of the Battle of Dale outside, I guess Dale and against the Force of Easterlings that killed um, King Dane and King uh, Bran, wasn't it, I think? And then their sons would succeed him. Uh, Thorin III's next son was during the seventh. It was said after thereafter that the dwarf's reign and lineage had ended. Our air, our capital, of course, is Erebor, and I'll let you read that bit here. I'm going to read the main opening scroll you get, but I'll let you uh, have a look through this. Um, but most of it has, of course, changed, so keep that in mind that when you get, <laughs> when we get into it, uh, things won't be okay. Sons of the Fallen, uh, yes, we get them, and Kazdim Guardians as well. Uh, of course, we're going very hard, very hard. Um, I'll turn. I'll leave the CPU moves on for now. Um, obviously, we can choose the uh, campaign rules, so we can go for the short ones or long. I'm gonna go for long. Uh, well, I want to have a long campaign. Uh, so we're gonna hold 24 regions: Erebor, Gundabad, which is there, uh, and eliminate the factions of the Easterlings, Goblins, and the Orcs of Gundabad. Now, the Orcs of Gundabad should be interesting because again, they're gonna be facing probably potentially the Anduin as well. Um, but again, most of it will be against us. Um, as for Angmar, uh, Angmar, no, the Commons of Moria, sorry. They're going to be up against Kazadum, the High Elves, a lot of factions in Eridor, so we shouldn't have to worry about them too much. We can always show up and just finish them off, I suppose. And then these things are Rune, interesting one, because Rune, of course, start next to Winian. Dwayne Dale could easily fight them off. Um, but again, I, I always find an interesting one where Erebor and Rune fight. It's very interesting. You don't often see as two factions go up against each other, that much apart of course obviously in the war of the ring it's different but um but in an actual game set you don't see those factions fight that much and i really like it um unless you of course actually fight each other but quite often i've seen rune and erebor tend to ignore each other um but yeah uh, our noble units of course the dragon slayers iron guard act guard of erebor and dwarf and catapults oh i can't wait to see them again i love the catapults in, in castle team i really love my castle team campaign and the fact that we return to play as the dwarves and erebor again uh, the dwarfs in general, I'm I'm quite keen to do. So of course we are an infantry focused faction. Uh, we have very strong offensive units and we have high morale. We do have quite strong enemies, especially from Gundabad and probably Rune when they get their late tier units out. And we have no dedicated cavalry apart from mercenaries. Um, so yeah, right. I'm gonna edit out this loading screen. It takes a little while I've noticed the first loading screen, so I'm just gonna edit it out. And instead, we're gonna jump in with. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up the campaign. So, let's begin. And I, will and I shall see you all. And I don't know why I went to a very British accent there. But I shall see you all on the campaign map. And then we shall fulfill our destiny. Anyway, let's begin. Okay, welcome to the campaign map. Now, something I might have to do during the recording is actually pause. And potentially come back maybe tomorrow morning to finish up the recording. As I've got to go out. So, and I realised I uh, bit forgot I had me plans for the evening. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> but uh, so I just have to do a. I just have to cut it halfway and then come back uh, and record the rest of the video uh, tomorrow morning. But it would just be one video for you guys, so don't worry about that. But here we are. And as you can see, a great army has descended from the north and in various different places. And I'll talk a bit about that. And I'll also talk about the fact that we don't hold the Iron Hills. There's a lot to talk about. So, if you give me a little while, we'll get to that. Um, first thing to know is the enabling of the hardcore mode. I can't remember if this is in the Cows Doom campaign. I think this is actually a later version of AGO, I'm pretty sure. But, um, 
But yeah, so enabling hardcore mode. So we can enable the hardcore mode to restrict or resolve, add cost of seeding settlements and armies when they run out of supplies. Um, must have been, I, I had a look at this before, but um, <laughs> it's nice to all resolve sometimes. But I think actually it might be a bit uh, fun not to have the option. So let's give it a go. Go on. Um, so, welcome to the Violin Conquer AGO 2.1. So, this is designed to brief on the major change between DAC AGO and the Divine Conquer. Now, I'd recommend reading this. Um, AGO, I believe, even though the developers now, the head of the mod is actually now actually part of the lead modding council for Divine Conquer itself. Um, I don't know if he's still carrying on his sub on. I imagine he probably is. But, I, I don't know. Um... But yeah, as far as I'm aware of what I've heard, I think AGO version 3 is coming, I think, on the, on, which will be on version 5, of course. But um, but yeah. So I'll go pretty brief this. High tier barracks are restricted by other buildings you need to build first. Refer to the building browser. The HP of gates and walls is increased substantially, so it takes a bit longer to take something down. The Holden the Palantir, if you play as an Elven faction, the Mirror of Galadriel will toggle uh, Fog of War every few seconds. The Renai Kingdom starting as Gondor and Union Dolgador and Mordor starting as Dolgador require the engine of will be enabled. So you can like annex Dolgador as Mordor and same with Gondor as the Renai Kingdom. Uh, and you can do vice versa, but I think it's a bug involved in that, I'm afraid. Uh, recruitment times and replacements a lot lower. AJ is set at 6 turns per year, that's fine. Uh, and serial limit is increased to 16. The engine overall is something we haven't had in our version 5 of... Um, our Athenmore campaign is that our custom bodyguards will replenish to full size. So if it's a bodyguard size of 100 guys, they're replenished to 100 guys. Um, if it's a other, if it's like a, uh, if it was without the engine home, which goes up to 77 or 78, I think. Uh, with the ring script, you need to make, oh yes, I forget the ring script's chain. Uh, for the ring script, you need to make spine networks. This is done by moving your spine to another faction starting capital uh, region. You do not need to keep the spy there once you get the network ancillary, yeah. Uh, to find out where the ring is at, you need to spy in general so you can see the ancillaries. Um, Mercenary is a lot more common and useful, makes them Rebel Garrison and Roman Rebel Regions. And the mission button is to view the faction specific scripts and stuff. So, we'll read for this quickly. So, um, Dwarf and the Grudges. Make sure the Selmans, Kazdum West, Kazdum East, Gundabad, Dane Tools, and Erebor are held by dwarfs and get some money as a bonus. Now, this is just, it just means held as dwarfs. So we don't need to fight other dwarfs to take, so, because we doesn't mean, so to explain it again, it doesn't mean us um, directly, it can be any dwarf and faction. So yeah, it's similar to what we had in the Kazdim campaign. The next one is Battle for Erebor. Starting at turn 15, Sauron will send a message to Erebor. Give me and will disappear on turn 16 as the Great Enlarge to seek aid. Oh, actually, I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot that was turn 16, I thought it was like a bit later actually. So what I might do then quickly, is quickly change so Gloin comes in turn 10 and Gimli arrives in turn 15 and then just keep maybe as governors um, and then they disappear okay I forgot about that <laughs> so I, I just change that so Gloin comes turn 10 and Gimli just go arrives in on um turn 15 actually or should I have it turn 5 and then turn 10 yeah I think I might do that I'll do that yeah because then otherwise we won't get to they just disappear at turn 15 so as soon as we get Gimli they just vanish so yeah, so they're going to enlarge to seek aid, and you will lose control of them too, so it matters to enlarge itself. Uh, five turns after the match finishes his business in the enlargement, Gimli and Gloin will return. And three turns after that, you will be informed of an impending attack by Rune. You will have 12 turns to build up, after which Erebor will be assaulted by an army of Rune. Uh, ring scripts, up to capture and kill General holding the ring. Yeah, basically, yeah, we all know that. And now I need to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, first a bit of read about this, so we'll read this, and then make it on to the explanation. The kingdom under the mountain, Erebor. This is our realm. The power of the dwarfs in the easternmost edge of the western spear. While long beards and broad beams delve into the lambent and virtually inexhaustible... Um, oh, <laughs> I've lost that, uh, lost that bit of wording there. Inexhaustible veins of precious metals that provide the power and wealth of our king, Dane II. This is the power of the Iron Hills of old, the Dwarf Realm, at the borders of those we regard as foes in the Eastern Men Realms. Farthest from the Blue Mountains, where our people fade. It was he that marched 500 of our warriors to contest the claim of the Elves of the Woodland Realm and the Lake Men's ignorant demands upon the mountain. 
their attempt to flee from the rightful acclamation of Foreign Oakenshield, bearer of Orcris. Sadly, Foreign Oakenshield was lost in this brief clash of differences, but our timely arrival won the Battle of Five Armies, a battle that saw our final revenge upon the line of Azog. We relished in the slaying of Bolg from the Misty Mountains, Azog's son in vain. Now, a quick change to the books and the films. So, Azog dies in the Battle of Azog Limbazar. And it is Dane Ironfoot that kills Azog in that battle. In the films, Azog didn't die. He got wounded and then returned. But uh, also, Thrall died a lot earlier than uh, the Battle of Azog Limbazar. It was led by Frayn. And uh, Frayn was actually then captured and then Thorin took up the mantle and whatnot. Of King, uh, but yeah, basically Azog died in that battle. Uh, however, in the books, um, yeah, Azog died in that battle in the books, but in the films he lived. Um, and obviously, Bol died in the films and died in the books the same way. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, this wondrous act forever weakened the goblins' hold in that far domain. Our arrival was not timely by fate alone, for dwarfs may not be fast as elves are in war, but we have such strength that we march for days without rest on limited rations. Hard tack and dried meat. As the Iron Hills have birthed us to do, the ravens still remember us, their wings bring word of events afar. Dane the second, our king, the greatest lord of dwarfs, rich and strong be end beyond any man's line, robust and bold beyond the strength of elves and men. Balan of Fundin's, blo of Fundin's blood reclaims Moria, the kingdom of khazad and no other dwarf realm shows strength enough to support us as we do, our beards against Dane's will. Alone of all races, we remain resistant to the devilry contained within the dark gifts that lay like poison in the seven dwarven rings. They spelt our doom. However, as the dragons hunted us for them and the riches they brought us, as did Sauron, to recover that which did not work to his end. You'll notice that, of course, the rings of power worked well for the men, the nine rings, uh, nine men that became the ring braves, but the dwarfs and elves, they sort of resist it. The elves resist it entirely. Whereas, of course, the dwarfs, um, they sort of, it sort of kind of corrupted them a little bit, but not enough for them to turn completely evil. It just became more greedy and whatnot. Um, yeah. So we have renowned our friendship with the ravens, and they uh, float in flight upon our war bands as we prepare for war once more. More, we have turned the wary science between the dwarfs and the men of Dale into a grand friendship, which has brought bounty in ways we cannot possibly provide for ourselves. Their trade has brought prosperity to their people and brought our survival and the true friendship we do not enjoy elsewhere. Our, our efforts fall to this destitution, they have our hole to retreat to, and Erebor is impenetrable to almost any foe. We are friend by the machination of Saren once more, and we will not give in. Resistance is our very nature. Hardy Aule's children of rock and stone. Preparations are underway for you to lead our armies to victory, but it will not be easy, for we are not numberless. We will face the Easterlings, Orcs from Dogodor, and our enmity with dead bogs, goblin kin, shall surely erupt once more. The shadow gathers its allies and we stand in the face of Sauron in the north, where we shield even the elves from his terrible intent. Well, the music is really getting into it. <laughs> it really sounds right, doesn't it? I may get copyrighted, but... Oh, well, I'll talk loud enough and it won't come up. We are well suited to this final war. Dane has amassed riches beyond compare. Our minds lay deep and our armories are well stocked. With master smiths fashioning of arms and armour. The mattocks and mail, the very dwarfs to fight Bog in the past, will sing in the shrill war pain once more. And the blood of black goblins and the thin blood of man will surely spill across battlefields. Our strength is augmented by our great friends in Dale. The toys we make for their children have won us a deserving friendship that gives our forces hope. Strength unbound in the realm in that we do not stand alone. Never a stronger realm has there been since the glorious days of Khazad-dûm. Baruch Khazad, Khazad Aymanu. So yeah, and if you're wondering what that means, uh, that means acts of the dwarfs, uh, the dwarfs are upon you, basically. Uh, that's what the first bit means. So I looked up for recording. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. And uh, <laughs> I wonder what he means. And I found it. And I was like, ah, there you go. Ooh. What's this? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's for a YouTube comment. A oh, small critique. Uh -oh. Uh... oh, snap. I was moaning about the uh, fact that I spent too long talking about the, the poll. Well, sorry. <laughs> 
Wait, what was that? Was that the poll video or was that the... Oh, yeah, well, I'll look at that later. Anyway, <laughs> on to the more important things. Um, we are here to fight against our enemies. So, basically what has happened, Sauron has sent... Sauron knows Erebor's this really good strategic value. He's why he wanted sort of... I think in the films it alludes that Smell could be brought over to the side of... Um, uh, Sauron, but I, I don't know if that was would have been. I don't know if that was a thing in the books. I can't really remember that being the thing. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, so Sauron has sent an army to reclaim Erebor and take. Well, not reclaim. Take Erebor and use it for its strategic value to friend the Wooden Realm, Dale, Dwinian, Basically, have a massive hold in the north and crush his enemies. So, and that's what he's done. He sent a massive army to fight us. However, we are not alone. Well, and we'll talk about the Iron Hills in a bit as well. But Thor in the Third stands ready. With an army of dwarf and warriors. Some from Erebor, some from the Iron Hills. Some from Khazad Doom that he's brought back with him. Because in my little story, uh, Thorin actually went off and joined um, Balin in his reclamation. And they succeeded in that, thanks to Thorin's help. However, uh, Thorin, of course, has returned to call for aid and bring aid over to Khazad Doom. However, uh, word reached him as he was still in Khazad Doom about the uh, sudden massive merge uh, of forces marching from the north. And so Balin sent some men with him as well. So we've got men from the Iron Hills, men from Erebor. All the Dwarven Realms have come to fight, even out of the Orokani and the realm to the south. There's a Dwarven Realm here. Now, unfortunately, the name escapes me. But there's a Dwarven Realm here. But um, it's not in represented as a settlement, unfortunately. But essentially, um, if you play the Seeker 2 game, uh, game of Friends, no... The Seeker 2 Middle Earth project, you'll notice there's a Dwarven Realm here. And that has a. Uh, and that we're coming. That there's some, uh, something we'll come into detail about that later on. But uh, men from there have come as well. And now we stand with a mighty army to throw back our enemies. Um, we are joined with some allies, though, for the King Franduil has joined us with an army of elves. Uh, King Brand has come as well. As has uh, Norway of Dorwinian. And I will put my spy there so we can see uh, what their compositions are. But there's Norway's army there. There's quite a few Avari forces and quite a few uh, men of Dorwinian. Uh, and Dale, there's a Dale force here. And this is the Wooden Realm force as well. This is our army made up of quite a few dwarves and also a few Dale and a couple of cell swords that join us as well. Our enemies then. We have Lord Camel the Easterling, who has his own army. Afrog, who has another goblin made up of goblin force. No one special, just a random goblin in general. Um, we also have Mazok, who is the grandson of Azog the Father and who is the son of uh, Bolg. And he comes with an army from Gundabad. Uh, we also have Agandawa, he's come from Angmar to help. And also the armies of Rune under Loki Khan Rukar. So we have that to deal with. <laughs> So that will be our big battle. I wanted to sort of try and do a sort of, I guess, um, I guess battle the five armies, but like a different, just a different style and modern, modern time period. So I guess that's what we're doing, and I'm all for it. Um, moving on to the next conflict, the Iron Hills has been overrun by an army basically funded by Sauron and funded by Dark Numenorians and basically the men of evil that have taken over. Uh, our um, settlement of Kirk Gafal. Um, so basically, we've lost the Iron Hill. So we start up with just Erebor, which makes our job a lot harder. Oh, <laughs> forget I'm not. I don't have a. This is all these windows, so I can't. I can't lock my cars for some reason. I've tried, but it doesn't work. Anyway. Uh, so King Dane Ironfoot has ridden over here to face this, this army, and we'll talk a bit about them as well. Uh, Dane has been with quite a few dwarfs, of, mainly from the Iron Hills and warriors that he brought over from Erebor. Well, most of the main armies, of course, over with um, Erebor. But Dane's gone off to try and strengthen and retake his homeland of the Iron Hills. Um, so this is our army here. We've got a couple of mercenaries and mostly men as well. Um, Dane, his bodyguard, is the Sons of the Fall. I didn't mention that. Um, anyway, onto the army composition. We have Clan Lord Ruin. He has arrived from Ered Lewin to give us a hand. As has King, uh, not King, sorry, Prince Bar II. Well, it could be King, depending on how badly the battle goes. Um, and we have some Elven Warriors, Lord Caliborn, Círdan, and Elrond. Now, don't worry, once I end the battle, once the fights are finished over here, I'm going to teleport them back. So, Caliborn will return to Karas Galifon, Círdan will return to the Mithlond, and Elrond to, of course, uh, Imladris. Uh, Ruin will also go back to Eredluin as well. 
Uh, Bard can just... He's not too far away from his own land. He can go back. I might possibly teleport Norway's army back home, potentially. Um, but the Wooden Realm, Dale, they're so close to their own land. It doesn't matter. There's also... Um, I'm going to assume I did the this way so we can see him. you also notice there's an army of Dogodor setting up a few of the other armies to secure some of these forts. So Lagaran sits inside his fort. The Clericals in the other one. And also Yularon, one of the Shadow Rangers, is sitting in there as well. We've also gone ahead and got a lot of alliances. We've all secured loads of alliances with Khazad Doom, Ered Lewin, Dale, Dorwinian, the Woodland Realm, Lothlorien, and Hada High Elves. We've basically secured our alliances with the Elves and a lot more than we have in recent years. And now we stand together to fight them. I'm pretty sure we will have trade rights, so I don't need to go through and find their trade rights. But of course, I could sell my math information. Let's do that see you, my friend. quickly. We, we don't really need the money, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, because why not? I do not okay. <laughs> well, that failed. Um, let's go towards the Anduin, because we want to chat to them. So, we started the map in that direction. As for our spy, I'll leave him there for now. I might need him yet. Um, so you're wondering, why have we got loads, 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 loads amount of money? And I'll explain. So, we have, as I said before, I didn't go into much cheating, uh, not cheating, sorry. I didn't go into the console campaign script and whatnot. So, I basically gave, put the generals into the campaign script. And this is the only... I'm not going to go over there who they are. You're going to discover that for yourselves. Um, I mean, the one there is pretty damn obvious, isn't it? You may have possibly glanced and maybe might have noticed that name. Possibly glanced there. But basically, I'm get, what I've done is obviously I've worked out what generals will come at what times. So I've time, gone to their upkeep because these generals are all costing me money. Like the arm upkeep is 22000 <laughs> And over the amount of turns it will take for them to arrive, uh, it's going to cost me a lot of money. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've times the amount. So to say, for example, Gimli turns up at whatever turn. Um, here turn up at that turn. And I should really go through and change it now because of... Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, we're going to go into a lot of debt anyway. So what this does is just sort of stops us going to debt for a period of time. So it gives us a chance to possibly actually now... Um, so giving us his money, yes, it's very cheating, but it does stop us going to an awful lot of debt. Um, otherwise, we our economy just won't survive. Um, and the only other option is putting these generals in at the game start and then being present in the campaign. But I feel as if that will just make the campaign ridiculously overpowered. So I thought, yeah, let's not do that at all, and let's just let's just not do that. So I give myself loads of money instead. I've calculated it with the with a calculator. I've times the amount so. I've Got the upkeep amount. I've times it by how many other turns so it takes for them to arrive. And then I've just put that in the calculator and given them myself the amount of money. Um, which, to be fair, keep in mind, we are going to be losing this money a lot. So it gives us a bit of time to build up our economy. So that when the debt comes crashing down, we can hopefully survive. Um, first order of business then is building up a stoneworkers hall. And sticking the uh, public order on. We want to get the growth up as best we can. Um, so we've got the Throne of Frayne. Eventually we can recruit a very special Dale unit, which we shall see later on. I mean, once we finish the ring script. Um, and yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, Thorin's bodyguard, I didn't mention that. Uh, Thorin comes with the Khazadum Guardians. He's been in Khazadum, he's helped reclaim it. So Balin gave him a good unit of Khazadum Guardians and two other units to serve with him. He's got two units of Axe Guards, two units of the Iron Guards, King's Warriors. In my mind, the Dwarfs that are here in the Iron over there um, are also present in the battle at the moment. So they're here as well. Um, we've got a bunch of, we've got some Cell Swords, we've got some Private Axemen, Farmhand Pikes, Dale Cavalry, Private Cavalry, some Dale Swordsmen and Bowmen, and some Axe Infantry and Sons of the Fallen again. I mean, Erebor, as you can see, and I've to, to counteract it, I basically made it so. I used a cheat to recruit the units so they could be part of Thorin's army. So that means we can't recruit any new units for about... What's the nearest? About 23 turns. I will go ahead and build a spy and diplomat. And we'll get them in early doors. So we can get some more diplomats and spies. Uh, so I can send someone one to probably towards Rune, potentially. Um, so, yeah. Uh, on to Thorin, then. For those who are... This is our family tree. Uh, it's clear that we have Glory and Gimli. Like, it's just no, it's not a no-brainer. Uh, that's Gloin's background. Uh, I guess I can read this. I'm gonna be like going out in a bit, so I might have. A, I'm gonna try and read this, and then we'll just carry on. 
Actually, no, I'll save Glory and Gilney for when they turn up, and then we'll have a read of them later. I uh, have a read of four and stuff. So his four and stone helm is read to the unknown ruler of Erebor. He eventually see, succeeded his father during upon his death outside of Erebor during the Wars of the Ring. And this tells you a bit about his uh, reign, close ties with the Kingdom. Uh, me reminds of Minor Moria and is summoned with the seventh final reincarnation of Durin. And apparently thereafter the dwarves would uh, go out of that. Oh, excuse me. But the dwarves would eventually go out of like a, uh, what's the word? A fashion, I suppose. <laughs> He's got some royal armor, he's got dwarf and flute, and he also carries Oaken Shield. King Frame led the vanguards. I don't need to read it. Do I need to read all this? Nah. Um, it's an Oaken Shield. You, know, you get a gist. And he also carries Thorin's old sword, Orcrest. And it was said Orcrest and the Arkansas was buried with Thorin, but we're going to say that we've actually got the sword. Um, we, we just carry. There's no point a very, really good elven sword sitting in the vault just not doing much. We may as well use it. So that's why Orcrest. It's not really an accurate image. No, this is this is just in the game. I haven't edited it at all. Um, so it could really do with like a new image of like the one in their films. But oh well. Orcrest. So Orcrest was crafted by the elves of Gondolin and is the mate of Glamdring. It was found by foreign Oaken children, the trolls, Lair, and Eridor. So there you go. And Foran's a really good commander. I think, is he who's our best? Dane's the best. That's good because he didn't show me the other ones. Dane's our best commander. And she thinks so too. <laughs> the king of Durin's folk. King under the mountain. Under the mountain dark and tall. The king has come into his hall. His foe is dead. The worm of dread. And ever so his foe shall fall. The sword is sharp. The spear is long. The arrow is swift. The gate is strong. Um, Dane carries with him the Arkenstone. It could, could end badly. The Arkenstone of Frayne. Also known as the heart of the mountain. Is a wondrous gem. Discovered beneath a lonely mountain. That represents the family heirloom. Of Durin's folk. Uh, Dane's axe. Made in the Iron Hills, formidable axe of Dane cut many orcs. Next, in the Battle of Azanulbazar and the Battle of Five Armies. It's the very weapon that beheaded Azog when he was fleeing to Moria. After he had killed Nain, Dane's father. So it was actually Azog that killed Dane's father. Which is interesting. Bit of biography. Dane II is the son of Nain and grandson of Gror. The youngest son of King Dane I and is king under the mountain and king of Durin's folk. Dane fought in the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, but his only recorded detailed deeds are at the Battle of Azor Nulbazar. So it's where he killed Azor. Well done. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of... So yeah, we get the Stonewall Guild and reduce our income and whatnot now to get my economy going before the deck kicks in. Because it will kick in. Even though we've got loads and loads of money, that minus 20... All the like expenditure is going to chip away eventually. And we're going to be in crushing debt before we know it. So we need, So we have a chance to get the economy going and what not. You may think, oh, well, you start off with quite a lot of armies, you'll be really overpowered. No. Because <laughs> I've done a few test runs of these battles, and in most of my test runs, my army gets not reannihilated, really but it gets heavily damaged. And also, we're not just, you know, we're fighting these armies, and then we're going to fight these four armies, because the AI won't do it, retaking them so we lose men in the process, and by that point, we won't have much of an army at all. And keep in mind, we can't recruit any more troops, so this is my lot. Um, apart from the generals that will come in turn 5 and turn 10, but they won't, because Gimli and Gloin will soon be off. So, um, they're, they're only going to be used as governors, pretty much. And the same with my testing here. We'll lose a load of men here. Oh, I didn't show the, um, armies. There's an army in here, we we'll see, but we can't show that just yet. Uh, so we've got a Barrow White just come down from the north. Um, actually, I don't know if I can show you without actually going into the battle. That's fine. What I'll do is I'll start with this battle first, and then we'll move on to the Iron Hills. And then we'll do the big battle for last. We'll save the best of last. Um, this is the army from Lord Caliborn. And this is the army from Kirdan. For some reason, Kirdan's bodyguard is just changed to Calaquani Lords for whatever reason. I don't know why that is. It's just... It, I don't know. I think Caliborn's bodyguard is from Chains. No, 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 no. That's fine. It's still the Iberia and Ning life. But yeah, some units like in the files it messes up. So Gilgalad's company for some reason isn't Aaron's bodyguard. Because for some reason the files is weird. I don't understand that to be honest. But okay. This is the Prince Bard's army. Same bodyguards. This is uh, Clan Lord Ruin. Clan Lord Ruin is a different... Uh, it's very new actually. He's new for the um, uh, the sub-mod. So that's... I'll let you read that. But that's basically... That's Clan Lord Ruin. He's a new general. He's a new faction leader of Erid Lewin. And, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. That's his army as well. Uh, so what we're facing, Captain Frakul, who is basically a goblin army, and they also have great spiders, which looks on the battlefield, because I've done test runs of all these battles to make sure they work. 
And on the battlefield, those students look terrifying. <laughs> they are the last offspring of Shelob, so they're like the grand, the grandchildren of Ungolian, basically, and they look terrifying. Uh, you've got some mountain orcs, wargs, and Ender's Wife hunters. This is the old Ender's Wife. They haven't given their new skins in DAC version 4.6 and AGO. So there you go. Uh, Captain Zogdash. You've got some Black Uruk, some Ravanian forces, and Azra Zahir forces. Uh, Azra Zahir, yeah. And then the Barrow White army. You've got some Barrow Whites, which I love the look of the Barrow Whites in AGO. They look so good. They look so much better than what they do in the uh, version 5 of DAC. But the Barrow Whites look just amazing. They look very much like Draugr from Skyrim, don't they? Um, Saraline Mercenaries, Trolls, uh, and yeah. So that's what we're up against. The only general is this guy. But it's not much of a general. Rafe. <laughs> yeah. So we go up against this. This will be our next battle. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to record it today. Well, I do have time to record it. Just not at the moment. So what I will do is I will come back uh, in probably tomorrow morning. I don't start work till about 12. So I've got a bit of time in the morning to, if I get up early enough, I'll start up, be able to get these videos in, battles in. And um, this probably, I expect... I feel like these two big battles will take up most of the runtime for this series. For the uh, series? No. For this first episode. So I uh, expect this to be the first episode. I might end the turn afterwards as well. But um, this will take up most of the time. So uh, what I will do though when we come back is I will skip ahead and go straight to the battle screen. So you won't have, have to sit through the loading screen. We can go straight into it. So a 2 to 1 ratio. Um, now I have designed these battles in theory to of course for us to actually win them. Um, because if we don't win these battles, well, we might lose Dane, we might lose Foreign, and the campaign will not be off to a good start at all. So, yeah. But again, if we lose these battles, like if we just completely lose them, I'm not going to reload them. So if we lose the battles, we lose the battles. That is it. There's nothing we can do. Uh, that, that is how, that's how it's going to go. We've lost, basically, and then we have to pick up the pieces. Um, but obviously the idea is that we don't. But we never know. Um, I think if I go to my, um, if I go to the, if I fight these, I think, it is a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's not entirely set in stone. So it's not like a, it's not like we're definitely going to win. The rebel army would like to win, but those spiders and trolls might be a pain. But, uh, who knows? It can go any way, it can go either way, it really could. But anyway, that is all for this part of the recording, and in a couple of seconds I shall meet you on the campaign map for the Iron Hills battle first. And then we'll end it off with a big battle of the one, two, three, four, five. The battle of the nine armies, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Yeah, nine armies. <laughs> I don't know if we call the episode that. I mean, that'd be too much. But I mean, the battle of the nine armies. And I mean, it's the same here. Battle of the nine armies here as well. But it's just a bit of a, I'd say a smaller scale. Like we have less allied forces here. But anyway. Wait a minute. That music is CA2, isn't it? No? No, okay. Alright. Yes, it is. <laughs> I just thought, what the hell? What game am I playing? And, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go um, end this recording here. And we'll come back in the morning. I'm going to go uh, deal with that guy in the comments as well. Uh, moaned about the uh, runtime. Oh, you need to make your videos shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to talk... If I'm going to spend... I've spent loads and loads of time talking. But I don't care. Um, I'm gonna continue that that's just the way i do things i like to explain and talk about what i'm doing i can't go into a series and not talk about what i'm doing <laughs> because because no one's because also i'm gonna get loads and loads of comments of people going oh what what is this what's this what's this what's that so i'm just gonna actually explain it to you now <laughs> instead of going yeah well this is this army let's fight them this is this well yeah they've taken the iron hills but let's go fight them rather than just take a moment to explain what is going on rather than like, yeah, well, this is what's going on. Let's fight them. <laughs> I, I can't do that. Um, I'm going to sell my spy here, actually, because also, actually, uh, there's an army here that's overtaking the fort. But this army here, I'm going to send to... Uh, uh, I could have sent to... Yeah, I'll send to... Actually, no, I'll send this guy west. He can search the ring. I do, If I can find the one ring and destroy it that way, that I want to do that, so I might give that a go. That's, my, that's how we take out uh, Mordor. I like the idea of going off with an army, nicking the ring from somewhere, and returning back home and kicking the crap out of Sauron and killing, killing him, pretty much. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all this part of the recording. I will see you in the battlefields, and this may be about a two-hour episode, because I have gone for quite a long time. 
But anyway, that is all for now. And I shall see you in the battlefield. Welcome back. We carry on as we're about to load into the battle with in the Iron Hills. There's quite a quick looking screen actually, so I just thought I'd record it. It didn't matter too much. Um, I may have bashed that guy's comment too much, but actually, uh, some of his points were bad, and I do spend a bit too much time talking about um, maybe the beginning of the campaign, but um, it's my hope over a certain amount of time we'll find a, I guess, a balance to that. But for now, it's just, you know, I, I don't really mind. Um, I haven't been getting too many, but I have mean, like the one comment I've seen that's had a few bashes, but other than that, it's not too bad. Um, interesting artwork, that one. Uh, I don't know if it's meant to be Baradu with the eye or not. I'm not quite sure. Oh, we got this fog because that's going to be a pain in the ass. Please go away. That's better. All right. Um, oh, another thing I'll talk about as well just before we get into it. Um, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I've chosen to stick with the Gimni and Gloin thing. So, uh, Gloin will just show up at turn 10 when stick around for five turns, disappear. And then Gimli will just return... After we got him last I guess. Um, which is fine. Um, I guess, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, he can just return then. Um, it's not the end of the world. So, we're going to make... So, we're going to have a look at our units then. This is the Sons of the Fallen. They have all the same stats. Oh, I didn't do the... Hang on. No. Pugger. I was going to do the button that makes me move around, but now I have to do it this way. Oh, that's really annoying. Um, yeah, because I used to have Q&E, where I used to move around the camera without having to, like... Oh, that's so annoying. Uh, <laughs> I'm tempted to go back and do that again, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just have to use a mouse and hopefully it won't. To which you're playing. This is the Sons of the Fallen. This is um, our bodyguard, which is the same stats as these guys as well. Two units to go with us. Eight more me out of me, I guess. Oh, is there not another key somewhere I can do? No. Just have to use a mouse and hopefully we don't go off screen too much. Uh, these are the King's Axes. Um, very good uh, armor-piercing unit. Basically a striker from Drew. Same. The Sons of the Fallen. Yeah, they're more shielded. Like, they have shields and whatnot. Good defense. Uh, King's Axes. got everybody from Drew, which isn't too bad. Again, I'm hating, hating the fact that I can't press Q to move around. But it's fine. I'll just quickly change it <laughs> before the next battle. Um, everybody from Drew. This is about that doesn't matter as much if we lose. Because we can just retake the Iron Hills at any point. Because it's just the rebels. Whereas the other battle, if we lose that battle, um, the dwarves, the orcs, and whatnot could just move straight on Erebor and we'd be buggered. Um, so that is the one I'm more concerned about. This one, not it's not too bad if we lose. Still be annoying, don't get me wrong. But other than that, it's just been annoying. Our laborers, I think, were changed actually in stats. And these are the Iron Hills Mattox. We've got another unit of those as well. Which is actually a unit left over from the garrison recruitment. We've got some travellers here. And we've got the Dale Cavalry. Which will be very useful here. Because from my experience of all the times I've fought in this sort of battle. In this, in this my, um, my testing. Um, the AI tend to march straight on the elves who spawn behind them. Uh, in the north then we have this main army here. Which I think is the Black Uruks. You can see some of the Azras I hear there. And the, King, and it's the Ravanian forces. Black Eric's at the back there, and you've got some more forces coming here. Mainly with the trolls that stand out there. You've got some of the Barrow Whites. God, they look so awesome. If you look close at the Barrow Whites, you'll notice that they actually, they're levitating there. <laughs> oh, it's such a cool feature. Uh, and I think there's some Saraline there. And then this is the army that I think is much more fine interesting because of these monsters. <laughs> that is so cool. I love them. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, some wargs on their own then. Which, look at the size of the spiders and pet of the wargs though. Good god. Um, <laughs> and this is largely a goblin army, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it is pretty much goblin. Right, we need to go over there quickly. Um, this is going to be interesting. Um, in the test runs I've done, we've all won these battles. I got ah, uh, what is R? Ah, oh, there you go. Right, so, yeah. So as you can see, they're gonna turn around and go straight for the elves coming. So Kiran's gonna get whacked immediately, which is unfortunate for him, but unfortunately, it's not what I can do. It's just a placement with the AI, unfortunately. But this is Kiran's army. Them elves, Melinda, the Mithlon nobles. They're looking snazzy. 
The Kalaquendi Lords, um, I think Keir Dan is just there at the back there. I think the, you'll find the Dune Bodyguards, who I always love the previous guys to circle. So cool. They have accents as well, which is interesting. And Elrond's in the camp here, stupidly not with his... Yeah, here comes Elrond. I think that's dwarven music I can hear in the background. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It seems... I don't know, because it seems they're returning... No, I think they're just coming down. Uh, over here, we see the army of... Uh, where is he? Ah, there he is. The Lothlorien coming around. Yeah, I think they are just immediately running to the... Why have I not got these guys on running? Yeah, I think the elves might just get whacked. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I mean, the elves must be charging in, I think. Uh, last time I did this, they just... Well, they are charging in. Oh, my God. <laughs> elves, what are you doing? Why do they send the bowmen in first? Oh, God. The elves having a spasm. All those spiders. All those sounds they make. Fantastic. Oh, you want those guys to be aggressive. The Mithlon nobles are in against the spiders. Oh, my cavalry about to arrive. Oh dear. It's going to be slightly on the laggy side, I'm afraid, because. I have to hit the infantry first. And the elves are in. All oh, those spiders are going to be kicking the crap out of those elves, I will say that. And we're in. Again, I wish I could press Q to move around, but fine, we'll just use the cursor for now. Alright, pull them out. So the army, the evil army, seems to be moving around here. It's not good. The elves, I'm, I'm afraid, are going to get hit to take the brunt of this battle. Unfortunately. The Calaquani lords are in, though. I mean, Kirdan, who were one of the oldest elves who awoke at Guervin, and, um, I don't know if I say you pronounce it or not. But yeah, again, one of the old, very old elf. Oh, we're in position. Right, move him. It's going to be a little bit laggy because there's quite a lot on the battlefield today. I'm able to, you know, it's a, you know, it's a fairly young game, but still. Um, right, reposition a bit. Yeah, there's elves. Oh my goodness. One Lindar guard remains. Jesus. The Mithlon nobles aren't doing too bad. They're up against goblins and wargs, so I imagine they'll do quite well there. Yeah, the only issue I've noticed is that it seems the Allied armies take bloody ages. But they are moving their walls and spiders against Lothlor and Archers. If they can get their shots off, they'd do some good damage. Um, right. Hit those Zurichovis here. Get them out of the game. Um, you guys can get in there. Right, go into one big just group for now. You know, put you guys... Right. You guys are going to have against goblins. You should do okay. it. How if I reformat it properly? Alright. Run. Oh, you guys run as well. Get them out because they've done enough damage. So I don't know how many men they kill. I was looking. <laughs> I must confess. Alright. I'm going to try and get them to move a bit faster. Right, Kidan's fighting. Ah, uh, Kidan. Yeah, uh, Kelleborn. Oh dear. Oh wow, those spiders are just brutal. I think. Are they. What are they? Heavy cavalry. Cavalry, I think. Um, yeah, heavy cavalry. So they're going to just run over them like mad. Uh, what new running? There you go. Right. God, the travelers arrived a lot quicker than I thought, but if they can get some shots off, that'd be great. Yeah, the lag's going to be a bit of a pain, but it's just we just have to bear, bear with it, I'm afraid. Aaron's probably... Oh, he's still in his way. Alright. You can target. Move up a bit. Start firing. I don't know if it's going to do much damage. Got my infantry coming in. Right. Uh, probably the best strategy with this army. I think if we just push them in and hit them now. Take this hill. Right, get on the hill. 
will do it. Here they come. I'm going to try and get on that hill, but unfortunately they're in the bloody way. Here we go. Give them all to above. Hit those overseers. Right. Our men are winning the battle. We Cavalry, what you up to, boys? The enemy. Problems the trees are just and the lag isn't quite helping either. They'll do it. Uh oh, there you go, hit them. That's a sound that I don't oh god the spiders. Ooh. Shit. Who was that? Was that Kirdan? Yep, Kirdan died. I'm not surprised. Um, because kirdan has got... I think... I don't know. Where was he? Where is Kirdan right now? Or where was Kirdan, I should say. Um... It wasn't the Zune name Bodyguards. Don't quite know. Hmm. Um, was he? Oh no, no, because he was the Kalaquani Lords. Um, I even know where the Kalaquani Lords have gone. Are they off to no? I think it was these fires that massacred them just here. Yeah, there's a load. Oh, that's the Lorian. Uh, not Lorian. The I don't know. I'm not sure what the hell killed him then. To be honest. Oh god. Oh Christ. Oh Christ. Oh god. <laughs> Right, I need. We've got a lot on the battlefield. Let's get everyone into movement now and stop lagging, please. Thank you. All right, boys, move forward. Don't sit here and do nothing. Move up. This wasn't hit by the. Yeah, the spiders are really powerful. They're not just any unit. They are really good. Attack twenty feet, defense twenty three. They don't have. They have a special attack. I don't know what that is, but. They also can't be broken either, so they're not far out. But yeah, they are. Yeah, they're pretty damn powerful. They are the stuff of legend. Oh god, the orcs are going. Oh dear, miles ahead. Um, right. Come over here and help them. There's a lot on the battlefield, so it's going to be... Ooh. Do they have armor and spiders? I imagine they don't. Oh, they do. It's probably because the hide is quite strong. If you can target them... Special Z's, whatever the hell you were fighting, is routed off the field. I fear you may hear my clicking a bit. Oh, that's fine. Right. Again, okay, it's a lot to, it's a lot going on today, so we need to really, we need to keep an eye on things. I think Elrond's on his way, just taking a sweet time, which is fine. That's my other company of dwarfs, miles and miles away. We're just, they're just not busy. Oh crap, I've forgotten my cavalry. <laughs> yeah, one of the intro might. Uh, if I start the intro, I wonder if it might get my generals killed. Be careful to not tempt fate there. Anyway. Half the enemy force remains. Yeah, my test run before, I didn't have archers. Oh crap. Alright, move up. It seems my sons of the fall now kicking the crap out of the Eric Overseers. But the trolls are just walking past us for some reason. Alright. <laughs> where, where, where are you going? If you can just catch them, I guess that'd be great. You're just getting shot at, nothing. Oh crap. Mountain all hunters coming your way. Oh, walks behind and hit the travelers. Oh crap. They walk through this, the army. And my cavalry. Again, I've forgotten. Oh crap. They may have to, have to fight. I may lose my cavalry because the Romanian riders outnumber me and I can't send. Oh, I can. No, I can't. Actually, get over there and help. Again, I have so many armies. Like, I'm not. Um, There's a lot going on. It's every interesting way to start the campaign, that's for sure. Um, because not often many campaigns start with a big battle. And this has definitely started with a big battle. I don't know where the hell the trolls are going. I guess we'll just follow them, I suppose. That could be my troll killing force. Uh, they're routed. Ah, this is uh, this is the issue I'm going to have now. It's just this. this. The, 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 those ghostly figures are going to be a pain in my ass. Reform, prepare to fight. 
Uh, get you in one big group. Oh, Dane, you're not fighting. It's probably a good thing. Um, I need to, like, see what the hell I'm working with over here. Right, hold on. I don't know what... Right, the Sons of the Fallen are good enough to not get themselves killed off easily. My... I fear my... Yeah, get Dane over there. Because they're coming in to fight. Actually, no, what's doing? Flanking them. Um... A hit of them should easily rout them, I think. Alright, here we go. They're buggering off. I don't know what they're doing, but they seem to try and, like, run away from my men and try and just focus on other stuff. I don't know what's going on. Um... No, they're fighting the dude named Bodyguards. Okay. What's going on? Ooh, and the music's playing, and... Right, let's get in there. Let's get in there. Oh, I love the door so much. I don't even know why. Because it's quite... A... <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Now the army's coming. Now the army musters. Alright. Where are you guys going? Oh, you're going to fight them, aren't you? They're just running away. Now the barrel whites. That's a unit and a half. Yeah, I mean, the cavalry are just screwed. Um, rather than let my other guys just get themselves killed, said Dane, then to finish them off. They're off. Oh, they stopped fighting. Or we'll run them down. Actually, you need to run them down. Oh, they are. Actually, they've come back in the battlefield. Um, Sons of Dane's going in. Against a Romanian spearman, who I fear will be utterly cut down. And Kellerborn's losing quite a few men. The Kyrdan, of course, died. It's not great for the High Elves, but, um... Yeah, it's not going to affect much, because the High Elves are getting miles away. Our army is tiring. Yeah, well... <laughs> the kind of makes sense, doesn't it, really? Like, considering we are fighting a lot of people. The Iron Hills and are going in. Oh, look at those Barrow Whites. So, sorry, just, just have a moment a minute to look at the Barrow Whites. Because don't they look so cool? They're like a Draugar from when the Mathics come charging in. And the age of these fools come crushing down, I can imagine. Um, right, anyway. Anyway, back to the battle at hand. Because a lot of forces have now come into the battle. Oh, what's good? We have sent the car to hell. Right, they're going to get some hunters. The Azrazai are off. Goodbye. That is Captain Zogdash, one of the Black Eric generals, I believe. But they're getting hit. Uh, I don't know where you're off to. Oh, crap. <laughs> Lintar. Uh, elves, come help, please. <laughs> oh, we're going to have the Black Mints of Black Urks. The force the orcs of Mordor against the dwarfs of Erebor. Yeah, they didn't stand much chance. They're not bad orcs though, they're really good. Um, and this is what I meant by we're losing loads of men, because generally we are going to lose a lot of troops. But the dwarfs are on their way. Oh, they're off, goodbye. Oh, turn around and give the boiling pike something to, something to really fear. Go on, Dane. And now, when I did my dwarfs campaign, some of you may recall, from Third Age 4.0. I got Dane and Foyd both killed. So we're going to see if we get both killed in this series. Hopefully not. <laughs> that would be nice if we don't. It is time. Okay. Alright, they're off. Goodbye. Right, the dwarves can carry on. We'll get over there and help Dane. And our archers finished them off. Again, there's so much going on the battlefield that I haven't... I haven't micromanaged in a while, actually. Um... I haven't done that much in the Athelmore campaign apart from that one time. Uh, oh, the axes are there too. I can't really... Do I have any other men to send over there? Ah, I do. Excellent. Alright, we killed the Barrow Whites. Only half the enemy force remains. Good. Alright. Oh. Now our allies are slowly coming into the battle, but it's just taking majors. I've come back. I'll just shoot them for now. This is why I wasn't too fussed about giving myself an army, because we're going to lose a lot of them in this battle anyway, so it's not like I'm losing. It's not too bad. I mean, look, we've lost a load of troops already. Um, 
enemy army flees the field. After them, cut the cowards down. Oh, elves shooting, and Black Urgs are off. Goodbye. Right, down to the Saraline mercenaries. Oh, I forgot about you guys. I must have made a complete forgot about the Sons of Fallen, to be honest, but uh, they're, uh, they're, they're kind of, you, you can descend their own. They'll be like, yeah, they'll probably be fine. And they've lived. Although these guys are, oh my god, what's going on here? Ah, the trolls. Um, yeah. True and steadfast, victory will be ours. Yeah, the trolls kind of have that effect on. If our allies, the problem is with Dale and Thingy being miles and miles away, um, is that unfortunately. Uh, the, again, miles away. Thankfully, Dane's been alright. Because if we lost Dane, can you imagine we lost Dane and Thorin in both these battles? Um, oh god, the campaign would not be very smooth sailing in any way. Right. Um, we need to send. Oh god, the Dale Cavalry again. No, 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 they're fine. Again, my allies are just taking their sweet time to get here. That's alright, it's like half our army's dead. Almost. Yeah, just don't bother, don't faff around the map, map mammoths. That's not what I'm trying to say. Oh Christ, trolls coming! You guys are on my piercing, right? Oh, one of the trolls has died. Yay! Let's see if we can finish off the job. Sorry about seeing dwarfs in the battlefield fighting their hated enemies, the orcs. It's just the stuff of legend, really. Oh wow, the infantry have oh they've stood their ground and they've beaten back the mercenaries. Well done, well done. Oh, they've just. That troll's just uh, gone to harass the um, do name wardens. Fine, that's okay. Uh, what's on my cavalry? If I can, I don't know if I can retrain my cavalry. To be quite honest, um, it'd be nice if I could. Okay, let's kill this bloody troll because this guy seems to be the bane of my existence. It's one of these big major battles, this, that really does shape the campaign. Because four barrel whites come in. Please don't kill Dane. Please don't kill Dane. <laughs> no, we're alright. I think we're going to win this. Despite Dale and or the others just not doing much. Um, other than that, though, uh, thanks, guys. You've really helped the day. But I suppose any men they do have, I guess, can go back to aiding the cause in, in um, the Blue Mountains, I suppose. Alright, why are you chasing those guys? Uh, what's still fighting? Uh, the Varowites, yeah, they're, they're probably going to carry on fighting. Okay. Uh, what the hell is still fighting? I think the spiders have all died. The trolls are all dead. It's shooting Dane. Uh, the general is here somewhere? Uh, ah, here. There they are. Let's <laughs> remember the hell the barrel whites are, and he's just over there. That'd be the enemy general there. Who is just getting their own men killed. Well done, elves. You're, you're doing great there. Don't. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know. I imagine that'd be. Yeah, that's over. Well, not a bad battle. Kirdan did drop dead. I don't know about Eron. I think he survived, actually. Ah, no, Eron's here. Yeah, everyone just stayed at the back and did fuck all, pretty much. Uh, the Dale army and the dwarves did bugger all, but then the Dale army will probably help. The fact that the Dale army didn't get involved isn't too bad. I mean, because obviously... Um, oh, I can do this guy. Ah, yes, cinematic camera. Oh, I can't zoom in. This. <laughs> I didn't realize. But yeah, the fact that the Dale army didn't lose too much isn't too bad. Because uh, the Dale army, of course, will now just move her off to go help... Um, Help us against Rune mainly, which is the good. This is and possibly Dolgador as well. Um, as for the army in Ered Lewin, yeah, didn't do a lot. Um, but I guess they can move on now, and they might be more active in the in the war against Angmar. Which, um, but yeah, hopefully we can retrain at least um, get a few more men. Um, I might possibly what I might do just because because the dwarves of Ered Lewin did absolutely nothing. As I might say that the Dwarf Sarah Loom will go ahead and give us a hand against, of course, um, the Iron Hills. Because generally that's... And that's sort of... Because Ruin was named as Lord of the Blue Mountains. So in uh, an honour with that tradition and honour, he will come give us a hand in reclaiming our homelands to say thank you. 
and there's a um, show of fealty. Um, at least for his fealty. I don't know if the ring script for the Aerodon is going to kick off. Um, I must admit, I don't actually know. So, I don't know if it's been edited or tweaked or not. But there's a chance we could be at war with this faction at some point. Um, as for Dale and the Elves, it's always fun to see the Elves fight against Dale. and uh, or The Dwarves fight against Dale and the Elves, potentially. But I don't think I'll bother doing that. Um, sorry, something stuck in my mouth. I had a hazelnut. No, I didn't. <laughs> what nut was that? I can't remember the nut. I think it's hazelnut, yeah. Um, was it hazelnut? Yeah, it's like hazelnut with like tiramisu coating. Very fancy. But yeah, that's the end of the battle. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> this is a clear victory. Yeah, it's not too bad. I didn't lose too many men. But I might. I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll get a ruin to help me with the battle of um, uh, Kirk, Kirk Kifal. Um, As for Bard, I'm happy for him to return home. I don't really care. Uh, victory is ours, though. We killed them all. Uh, who got the most kill? Oh, 306. Oh, Dale Cavalry. Well done. I wasn't keeping... To, there's a lot of going on the battle, so I don't tend to keep an eye on every single thing. So I apologise if it wasn't as cinematic as you were hoping. But again, I'm trying to win the battle. I'm not trying to uh, show a cinematic. <laughs> but yeah, Dale Cavalry did quite well. Well done. And they survived as well, so hopefully... And they healed quite a lot. Oh, good. Uh, we healed quite a lot of the Mattox... Cavalry, yeah, Cavalry healed, Max healed, some of Labour is healed, not too bad, and a couple of the King's Axes healed, that's good. Uh, the uh, Lothlorin killed 400, uh, Kyrdan, at the cost of his own life, killed 500. Kyrdan, again, I, I couldn't have made it any different, apart from maybe moving the armies around, but uh, Kyrdan just got... <laughs> I probably should have bit barred where Kyrdan was standing, but then he could have died anyway, so I don't know if it would have made much difference. Aaron came out on top, all right. Dale and didn't get involved, but the war was battle was won before Dale showed up. Um, Erlewin, we can definitely go get it. Yes, to give us a hand against the battle of um, um, taking back the Iron Hills. Uh, today's recording drink is joined with water because I work in the morning and um, well, not in the morning, midday really. <laughs> but um. Mm. But yeah, I, I, I felt felt quite lethargic today. Like the entire day, I just felt completely exhausted. So I decided to think, you know what? Um, I'm just gonna drink water and uh, go from there. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know what that happened. <laughs> yeah, loading screens first. I don't know if they're too long. Oh no, I say that and it just suddenly speeds up. So I don't know. Nice. So uh, I think that's from the Battle of Five Armies. Foreign Deer the Eagle destroying the <laughs> the Orcs. I think, I think that's Five Armies. Or it could be Baradur actually because of the tower in the background. And the, yeah, it could be well be Baradur. Anyway, victory is ours. I will now, of course, teleport my men back. And uh, we may as well just most them all together. Now, I don't really think the army inside of here is led by Ongasson. Who comes with these guys and they got a few arrows as Azra warriors now i don't know if they're gonna be much of a challenge um but i'm gonna get ruined and i'll move them all i'll move them next turn um yeah i'll, I'll move them next turn i'll group build another nice uh, sea towers don't work so there's no point just get around i'm sure that'd be fine but we didn't lose too many men we they didn't survive that's the main thing um that's a few of his company sons of the form still with some of them left King's Axe has got loads of them left. That's good. Arab infantry. Yeah, no. Cavalry. Dale Cavalry survived, which is always a win. All right. Oh, dear. Okay. That's victory. Uh, now, we turn our attention to the next battle. Uh, my plan, for at least for Dane, is to possibly secure the Iron Hills and then maybe move down this rebel region down here. I can't remember the name of it, but I know the region itself is called Gramophold. But there's a region down here I want to get to before Dale does. So, Your attention is that's the plan. Um, and we'll fight this and I'll teleport. Do te I'll do the teleporting off camera. All right, let's begin the final battle, the Battle of Nine Armies, which I'm afraid will never be no time six or any of that today because this is going to be a very long, big battle. This may be a two hour special, to be quite honest, because. Oh, yeah, they've got uh, Sauron's Wheel as well. I forgot to mention that. Uh, come all easeling. Uh, yeah, Sauron's Wheel is a unit you can get for, uh, of course, um,. Uh, the goblins, I think. I can't remember how that... And I think you can get them for good and the bad as well. 
And Eastlings as well. Not many of the gold units apart from the Rim Bodyguard and Lok Narim, of course. But uh, still, they'll be ferocious nonetheless. I haven't done a uh, CD Auto Resolve thing, it's completely removed, which is interesting. <laughs> You'll notice I haven't actually done the. Well, you would have already seen it, obviously, but I haven't done the thumbnail yet, so I don't know, quite know what I'm doing yet. Um. I don't know if I'll go for like a ruin, possibly, um, picture, potentially, of, uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to have a look, because I haven't looked for some artwork before, I couldn't find a lot, so I'll have a look again, and we'll see if we can find anything that's good, um, I kind of want to go for the idea of, because at the moment with the fragments of Erebor, so when we get to a certain point where we, I'm thinking once we've done the Dwarf and Grudges, once we've taken... Uh, depend. I imagine Kazadoom's going to get to it, but we'd take West Kazadoom for them if they haven't already. Um, so I'll probably do Dwarven Grudges and probably Gundarad's out of the game, I think. Not too worried if Rune hasn't come, hasn't completely been defeated yet. Again, I'm going to be focusing a lot more, but we are at war with these factions, so we're not going to be... Yeah, we're at war. We're, we're not going to be uh, uh, leaving them to it. But anyway, these are the Kazadum Guardians for er for Erebor, of course. And they come with basically the main big distinctive distant difference of it is that they're gold. Um, the Kazadum ones are silver, and they come with black um, shields. These guys come with gold armor, and they have red shields. Not actually gold armor. I don't know if it's actual gold. Was it plated armor? Probably. I imagine it's probably plated armor because gold isn't very good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, these guys come from uh, Kazadum uh, Moria. So we have to actually build them to get them from there. Which is we're not holding... I doubt we'll get those units again because we're not going to be back to... We probably won't return. We won't be taking over Kazadum unless, of course, the um, Kazadum die. Which is unlikely because they go into Horde and they tend to survive. But if they do die, they die. Axe Skull of Erebor, very good at the, ax the axes. Very good. We've got some Iron Warriors. Uh, Iron Guards, sorry. They're pretty damn good. King's Warriors, they for axes as well. Dwarf and Travelers, we saw them earlier. The Cell Swords, which have a different model in the uh, AGO than they do in version 5, looking very. Um, look, they definitely look a bit more, I would say, more from Middle Earth than they do the other Cell Swords. The other Cell Swords look like they're from uh, medieval Europe, to be quite honest. But, uh, but yeah, I thought they looked they look quite cool. Uh, the Gondor and Helmet one them is quite good. Private Axemen. Looking pretty neat. Will it be made to use? Of course, the come together, my friends. My reminder that I should probably play Bree at some point. Um, the farmhand pikemen. <laughs> Looking. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to survive this battle, but they might help. Some Dale cavalry, private cavalry, and more Dale cavalry. Some Dalian swordsmen. All the music from Battle for the Earth kicking in. Uh, Dalian longbowmen. Isn't the Rings of Power going to come out this year, actually? That's another thing. Um, my thoughts on Rings of Power, I kind of sort of enjoyed it, I think, for what it was. Um, like, you know, in my mind, you know, if I want something to be a certain way in the books, then I'm just going to... That's then that's the books. I can just read the books. I'm like, yeah, well, this happens in the books, and I'm happy with that. And I'm just, I just view, uh, as I do with most television series these days, as their, their interpretation of events or book stuff. It's like isn't uh, Harry Potter coming a new thing now, which is just I think interesting. I, I'm looking forward to possibly a different take on it. Um, yeah, the films, the past films we've had with um, the past films we've had, of course, will be the films. You know, you're never going to overwrite them, of course. Um, right, let's get just a mid tier. <laughs> is that a mid tier? I don't know. Right, I'm gonna try and my experience. They tend to just move to a certain area. Um, but I really don't know. Um, the map was a lot smaller than it did in the last one. I remember the map, the test run I did before was a bit more. There's a lot more going on, I seem to remember, but I could be wrong. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where the army moves first. I'm not going to bother deploying my men until I know where they're going. Unless they shoot me, of course, which is, you know. Okay. Right. Well, we're firing anyway, so. Get firing, boys. If they're coming this way, they want to fight, so let's give them one. Right, give them up quickly. 
The farmer and pikemen aren't pikes, they just carry big. Uh, I don't know, is that good draught, someone's saying? No. Well, they're firing at us, so I say we give them a good charge. Right, move over there. The archers are starting to fire off in their shots. Excellent. Oh dear. <laughs> Problem of the... I can't do the scroll lock thing. I did try and fix it, but it just didn't work um, at all. Which is unfortunate, but I get enough I could really do that. It's just... It just wouldn't work. Right. In, from what my test runs have seen, they tend to target the Avari. Now... Um... Which is fine. <laughs> it's not fine. Move them up. The Axemen will get their shots eventually. But anyway, let's move them. Charge! Sometimes a mass charge just does a lot of morale shocks. In this case, I don't think it's done a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Alright, let's move him out. Our men are winning the battle. The now, I don't... Like yeah, see, this is, this is the thing. Enemy. They're moving... Uh, is that where they're going? They're sending some men forward. And they're sending some men towards... The Dwinian, I think? I think, yeah. So they're definitely moving on Dwinian. That's what we're seeing here. Alright. Okay. Advance. Shall push forward and they will either die. I don't know what I was going to say. Die or be dishonored, I was going to say. That doesn't really make sense. Or am I playing Empire again? I've been enjoying my Empire series, can't lie. That's been really fun. I've really been enjoying that. And yes, I can see the Orc Avengers coming my way. The real issue here is that um, as if the cavalry of the Shadow Knights for Walker Moor is going to be the real... Where the hell are they going? Did I order you to attack them? No, I didn't. Alright. <laughs> okay. okay. That's not how I order you to fight, but okay. Private cavalry get another charge in. They're very heavily armoured, so I don't think they're going to do a lot. No, not. Right, put that there. Battle begins. Oh, you can turn around and go around. The only raiders, uh, basically, basically, I'd say, oh dear, they're getting combat. I thought they'd move out of the way, but they haven't. Oh, good. Run. You're not strong enough to fight the adventures in any stretch of the imagination. Where the hell are you going? Oh my god. The AI just... <laughs> what's going on? It's like organising the head this... Where are you going? What the fuck are you doing? Okay, right, we'll just ignore them then and we'll just carry on. Does the cavalry charge without orders? I'm confused. No. They're just really stupid. Or they just like to... Glory... I don't know. It. All right. I don't know what the cavalry was doing. I don't know. Are they, are they just idiots? My m money is on idiots, I think. Look at what they're doing now. They're trying to take the devil cavalry on screen. I'm like, oh god, what the fuck are they doing now? <laughs> All right. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them in an orderly fashion, please. We're hitting a lot of their archers, which is good. Some of the raiders there, but they're so all oh, crappy. I didn't realize that he was here. Uh, I can't even. Can I send out? I did not realize Mazog was here. Whoops. Okay, let's deal with that then. <laughs> and the fireman pikeman, get yourselves in. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Suicide. Yeah, um, I did not realize Mazog himself was here. 
in this little... Is that Mazog? Was that maybe just, um... No, it's actually just a unit. It's just one of the pale orc units, which I want to get my heavy infantry in there now. I fear the side of my pants. <laughs> Brilliant. Actually, no, no. Um... Sorry, just don't, just don't fire for now. Let's steal the power. If we can get them out of the game now, that'd be great. Right, when you finish them, line up. Um, let's see what's going on over in, with Dorwinian. It seems, yeah, Mazog's over here. Let's have a look at what's going on. No, I'll just slow it down a bit. Oh, that's wrong man. So I can look at these guys without worrying. Oh god, someone's died. They go up against the Avengers here. That's not a good matchup for Fawn Bladesman. Spear guards in there though. Oh, the Earth, he's been fired off. It's Mazogs nearby. Snow Spears up against the Born Bladesman. Born Bladesman against a lot of the Pale Erics there. Not too great, is it? Um, oh, what's going on over here? Oh, a Fawn Guard against the Avengers over there. Ah, so a lot of fighting taking place over here. The Bari Warriors against the Goblins. Okay. Is he dead? No. Alright, you know what? Uh, let's maybe not right throw or lives. Well, let's not do that. That said, charge. Oh, I should have changed the. Um... Oh, that's fine. We just have to. I'm sure we'll be fine. Don't need to pop the ability. Arrows in a pile in there. And the Pale Erics will be slaughtered at the thousand. I did contemplate possibly doing an idea um, at the start of a campaign where you do like a historical battle and then we do the historical battle and then jump into the game. I did contemplate that for Erebor, but I didn't. <laughs> um, um, so, I, yeah. <laughs> right, let them just. Who's this going over here? The Lake Town, the Dale Force is coming. The. Unfortunately. I'm going to have to get them in aggressive, because the, the winning men will get slaughtered by the thousand, and yeah, we're completely surrounded them. I'd rather move my men forward as a contingent army, otherwise they'll just get picked off and killed off. So, who are they going up against, actually, Dale? Dale, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that could go well, it could go badly. But anyway, we've won that battle. That's great. So it just seems they're all pushing towards, um, because this is all the Angmar forces. They're all going towards the Winian. Um, right, okay. Um, right. Move our men up. There's no point making them run, because if they start running, um, it's going to be a waste of men. Oh, actually, no, it's going to be silly. I know I should put my archers in the front, but I just feel like it's going to be too risky. There's too many men in the field. Oh dear. Okay, I don't know what the hell that sound effect was. There's no point making them run. They're going to be too tired and then be too crappy to fight. So I think it's just a safe bet to make them just walk normally. And it's going to take a while. But our allies are also walking, um, sort of. So I think actually we just make them um, walk. The Woodland Realm are miles away, aren't they? Good God. I see you remember the Woodland Realm starting a bit closer last time. Now, the winning losing this amount of men, because I imagine they've lost quite a few already. How many men have they lost? 30%. Um, we'll, of course, make Rune's job easier in the West. Because I have, because I've moved, put armies together, but I've also taken some away from other factions, so... Dale's got a bigger army because I've taken most of their garrisons and put them into this army. So. Hello. I can see that. 
Oh, it's just one Snow Wars Scout. That's right. I thought it was something we could, should be more concerned about, but it's fine. Um, I'm going to keep my cavalry together. Ah, here we go. I'm going to hit them. I'm not going to micromanage too much because I just know I just... Oh, I can't be asked. <laughs> that is the excuse. Yeah, someone remind me in the comment section to actually... <laughs> to turn the bloody... Uh, to make my... Change my Q and E keys. Not the barrel ones. Barrel whites are faint. Do they have? Yeah. The cavalry that we filled today is nowhere going to do much damage. The damage is going to be done by our, our dwarfs a lot more. Anyway, where were we? Watching my cavalry murder the barrel whites. We were 56, and now that is 30. That's a good charge, actually. Well done. Crap, Pike's coming. Get the hell out of there. All that famous rune sounds. Right, let's pull our cavalry back. Done well, but I think they just... Yeah, they, they, the barrel has got a bit of a hit on you guys. I don't know if they're actually... Oh, hang on. Hit the hillman. Some door slightly in the way. Oh god, did they come? They're gonna actually try to hit my dwarfs. Not too far ahead. Oh god. It's nice having big armies, but sometimes I find big battles are good. But they have so much crappiness when it comes to performance. Oh dear, the cavalry are getting absolutely done for. What the hell's going on here? Oh god, they're still in combat. What the fuck are you doing? Idiots. Alright. They're going to attack me with their snagger. That's really stupid. Alright. <laughs> Do you know who you're up against? I don't think so. Yeah, I think the axes and everything just they fought a bit better of it. <laughs> All right, I need to pull you guys out of the battle. Oh, that's not the time for you to lag like a bitch. Okay. No. Okay. Right. Why are the snaggers charging me? They're insane. Alright. <laughs> Up to you guys, huh? And this is when it gets very laggy because there's a lot of stuff going on in the battlefield. Ooh, what's that covering? Dale Cavalry. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. We killed quite a few of the Barrel Whites, so that's really helped things, I think. Yeah, they're charging to our elites of all things. Not just any army. No, 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 the, the elites. Oh, God. Uh, give them a hand, Guardians. Prowls are off. Uh, right, if I can get the archers behind the axe guard, and that way the axe guard, when they finish with their axes, can just finish. They can just protect the archers. Alright. Well, look, room bodyguards go in. The Easterlings are in. Get some privateers. Charge them in. Not gonna do a whole lot against them, they are pretty damn good. Oh, hello. Oh. Send foreign over there.
Right, they're going against Hillman. That's why I'm carrying all that. Shadow Rangers. Let's get them out of the game if we can. Who called with some guardians? No one called. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, where are you guys going? <laughs> what? What are you doing? Alright, you're at the farm and... Oh, you're chasing the thralls who are routing. I doubt they're going to come back to the battlefield. So if I can get my... Oh, God. If I can lag my cavalry over to the battlefield, then we can... Get some help. Ah, this is the. I got the lag. It's just not handy right now. Okay, let's stop the lag, please. Thank you. I ain't got her in. Okay, this is. There's so much in the battlefield that I can't physically. I can't look at everything. I have to fight. <laughs> oh god, the temple wards. Jesus. Right, forget the uh, Angmaru infantry. Oh god, they're going straight into the... Yeah, I don't know. Where's the... Oh, over here. Alright. Pull the Iron Guard out and you want to deal with... The Our noble allies have lost the leader. Oh Christ. Without the general, they may lose Someone died at the same time. Let's see the event message then. Uh, Lucan Rukar is dead, thank god. Who was it? King Brand's dead. Oh god. They've lost their king. <laughs> That's not good. What killed him? If I would let me. Can I see what killed the king? No? Okay. I just, I just guess I won't then. Um, no idea what killed the king. Uh, Kasten's nearby. Uh, mm, that's the Winian. Don't know what. Ah. <laughs> A merc with goblins, really? I, I'm sure the Kasten's must have done something there. I, I doubt it was just the... That's not good for Dale's morale. And the elves are still miles away. Our ally lies oh my god, who's dead? Is that no way, I think? That's we definitely going to be no way. Yeah. So no way and Bran died. Because no, they all targeting no way in the battle. Which is annoying. But uh, what can you do? There's unfortunately not very little you can do when the AI just charges. Just. allies are as unsteady as an egg and a stick. They flee the fields like cowards. We must look to our own men now. It's uh, probably the William. Uh, why you stretch yourselves out? No idea. Anyway. Protoraxes. Oh, the other Loka Rim bodyguard. I think it must have killed Rukar in that little fight now. Which is good. It's not easy when the game's lagging, is it? But I've got who they're fighting. Uh, ah, the frolls. You can handle that. Surely you can handle that, right? Fireman and Pikeman are holding the line against the snowhawks. <laughs> Good. Carry on. Oh my god. Jesus Christ! The Shadow Knights are in, and the Iron Guard up. Forty. Oh my god! Oh my god! Right, go over there and help. Oh no, over there. Oh crap! There's too much stuff going on. Crap. I need to defend them. Bird 2. Right, this is the cavalry's moment now. Get the clownsmen. Get them out of the game completely. Right. Wrong button. Oh my god, the castle. Jesus. Prime at least. Get your axes in. They're against the guardians. Not a bad matchup. They should hope to be alright. Except that guy just got slain in almost moments. Move up. In fact, shoot them. Shoot those cast. Oh no 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 no! Uh, I can't. I can't even stop that charge. Oh, 
Uh, rid of hostiles, it should be alright. Right? Oh, they're all routing. Fantastic. Right, move up. Right, they're off. Push against the Avengers. Actually, no, target them, because they're going to be more of a pain to kill. The enemy general lies Ooh. dead. Let the crows have his miserable bones, and let our swords have his Ah, one of the goblin generals is out. So these get rid of the goblins, that's not too bad. No, sod that, you're for Darata Warriors. Uh, the elves are starting to come in. Excellent. Right, we need to move. Uh, shoot the Shadow Knight. Danger me, right? Right? Oh, Christ. Crime in that. No. Oh, God. God, Dane's right there as well. Is it Kamal? Oh, God, it is him. Shit. <laughs> Crap. That's not good. Uh, that's not good at all. I want this I want this battle to be hard. I didn't want it to be a walk in the park. And it certainly is hard. I I went through the composition of the army quite well. Oh no, turn around, deal with them. I don't know what you'll Yeah, just shoot wherever you can and just get in the combat as soon as possible. Oh, the Dales. Archers are out. I guess we may as well. Oh, God. Crap. I mean, Darrow Tat War is not near. Really, the, the end of the world. Is that really a good idea? Temple Wards. Eh, that could go really badly for us, but at the same time. Can't let our friends and allies perish. Right. Oh, there, Gary. Oh, they're off. Turn around. Um, actually, they're getting, getting caught. The Iron Guard have been massacred there. Unfortunately, very little I can do. Only half the enemy oh, force remains. Hit the temple wards. Get them out of here. The warriors of Dale and the Woodland Realm are coming to give us a hand. Thank the gods. Mazog. Unfortunately, you must fight him. The guidance will come here your hand there, that's, that's alright. You're not entirely alone. Click the rules. No, the cop and banner don't give a crap. Right, to be quite honest, I don't care. I really, really appreciate. Oh god, don't get too close. Don't get too close. Frame, frame. Forward, watch out! Four just, yeah, I imagine he's using, well, using his axe, but uh, Orcrus is probably, uh, uh, he's probably got that somewhere. Oh no, what are you doing? Sod them and get into combat. Sod, what are you doing? You're wasting my bloody men by chasing idiots across the field of battle. Oh, what are you doing? Oh my god, the longbowman did quite well there. Oh, they killed Mazog. <laughs> the longbowman killed Mazog. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, crap. I thought things was getting too comfortable there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm kind of aware of that. Oh, Christ. Uh, there's guardians. Right. The enemy are badly flooded. They have lost. But still half and half. We haven't even killed this sniper. Alright. Hit them. Yeah, you staying then, it's not doing much. 
the sounds will. That certainly makes for an interesting little fight, this, isn't it? Oh, Christ, Dane, where are you? Where's Dane? Alright, stop. Stop. Uh, where is he? Uh, he's alright. He should be alright. He's not exactly in the thick of things. The Temple Wards are doing a number on him, though. Um, if Randall will get off his arse and actually help... Yeah, sod the pikemen. The kings, saving the kings, much more important. I couldn't give a damn about some pikemen, to be honest. Nick deal the Saron to open now. Ah, oh, crap. I don't know if that disrupts his charge or just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know if that really helps that much, but it's fine. Uh. Kill off the Goblin Man, make sure they don't come back. Oh, that's for the Cell Swords. You can hopefully help with handing your cells against the Maximum. They're only damn bloody, um... Save your King, uh, your Prince, before he gets himself killed. Is this the unit with... Oh god, it is as well. It's not just any temple you know, it is the uh where is he? Question is where ah there he is. Akendawa. <laughs> I really need to play the Border the North game. I haven't actually played it, which is probably surprising to many of you. Um but I have never actually played it. Problem is I find I have lack of time with YouTube as well. It's like I'm doing YouTube as well and I'm do I have time to play other games as well? It's a bit it's a bit time constrictive, unfortunately. But it's one of those things you have to sort of, uh, would you rather do this or would you rather use it there and record something? That's why I'm not doing intros. If I was doing intros, I'd never get any kind of time in my own free time to play any kind of. No, you're just not going to do anything. Hey, the wooden spearmen are in. Can we pop our ability? Yes, we can. There we go. And the elves and dwarves fighting side by side together. Glorious. Oh, that guy just got... Oh, no. It said that and they ran away immediately. Great. <laughs> it will just come down to the last sort of... Uh... Only half the enemy force remains. You know what you do. It is time. Alright, let's go on over here. Finish off the Hillman. Uh, yeah, it's good mind. Oh, was that Kamal the Eastling himself? No. That's not me yet, unfortunately. Oh, what's going on over here? Ah, Saren's will. Ah, they'll, they'll be gone in moments. Uh, let's pull the archers out. I don't really want to lose. I want to make you... Because we don't get many archers anyway, so... Oh, crapping sun sort... Christ and the sword with lots and lots of oranges. The pikes are coming. This oh crap, and the Sarons will. Oh dear. Crap. Yeah, trying to get my cavalry killed. Proceeds to get most of my cavalry killed off. Oh guardians, you're free. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Get to foreign. Get to foreign. Now, <laughs> run. Yeah, do you know what? Sod everything else. Oh god, they're gonna get killed. Yeah, stop them. Hit the archers if we can. Red's foreign. He's luckily quite at the far at the back. If not, I probably would have pulled him out by now. The wooden spearmen are in to help. It's good. The hitty tower getting some silver and arrows off. Nice. Very nice to see. All right. And the sword, the swords, the, the famous dwarf music is playing as the dwarfs rally up to finish off the enemy. Hopefully. 
Uh, have, you, have you lost your mind? The king's under attack. Help him. Coward. Get your asses into gear and help. Oh, help the Aaron Hiraf. Aaron, Aaron Hiraf. Oh. Now that is a beautiful looking unit. I love them. So cool. A very fitting unit for King Franduil. Speaking of which, is he okay? Yeah, he's good. Hopefully he doesn't die, because that would be a pain in the ass for the Woodland Realm to lose their, their faction leader. Um, hit them. Oh no, the farm and pipe gonna get massacred by the Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, that's kind of a death sentence for the Castellans thingy. Uh, back to Foran, who's way more important in this entire battle. If he dies, we're screwed. Oh god, he's fighting on one on one there. Thankfully the AI is not stupid. Ah! Steady as an egg and a stick. They flee the field like cowards. We must look to our own. Oh, they're in. Excellent. Oh, Kamal's still with us. Actually. Because now they've come in. Oh, Darrow took crossbows, they can sort off. They're not really much of an issue for us. Oh, kill the Shadow Rangers if you can. Uh, I want to keep the archers alive, but against the Shadow Rangers, you should hopefully just get them out of the field. Uh, be helping the. Yeah, we are. Um. Come here. Yeah, these guys are going to be a pain in the ass to kill later on when we fight the other Nazgul in the forts. We're coming up an hour and a half, I think. I think, yeah. yeah bye. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Uh, again, the cavalry have been... Not too well. I could try and keep the Iron Guard unit alive, but I'd rather than actually help. No, I could though, couldn't I? Yeah, actually, yeah, I will. Sod that. I don't know what I'm to do. That can be the killing of the bloody uh, archers unit. Nah, that's what they can do. That was heat out. Why are they over there? No idea. How's Foran doing? A, the, I think we've beaten back the... Uh, uh, not quite, no. Oh, uh, there he is. I say Ankentau. One guy, wrong guy. Ankentau is fighting on. To figure out how powerful the Temple Wards are. When we fight the, uh, we're assuming the Nazgul in the uh, Mordor. That's gonna be interesting. Right. So it seems that it's just the uh, it's just the skirmishing units that are still alive. I think when Ankentau goes down, I think that's the this battle is over. Oh God, what's fighting over here? For the archers. Uh, right, okay. Get them out. Run away. And I'm gonna get you guys to deal with them. Should I deal with the Loden Aru and get them out of the game? They're a pain in the ass to kill. Um, what are the stats? They're not bad, the Loden Aru, but if we can just kill them off, it'll be much easier. Yeah, thankfully Foran is on the front lines, or he's trying to escape. But the custom guardians aren't letting him get anywhere through. For him dead, Sauron's influence over his lands will fade slightly. Or he'll become a martyr. Or maybe. It's been an epic uh, first episode though. I mean, yeah, we've talked quite a lot of the first bit, but we generally have we've had an action-packed episode. So Oh there he goes. Ha. Attack while his men mourn the there you go. Uh, I don't know if Kamal went down, did he? I think he's still alive. Oh crap. <laughs> the Farman Pikeman. <laughs> uh, you guys are coming over though, aren't you, I think? Ooh. Kamal! Quick! Get in there now. 
Go, go, go. Cavalry. Come on, Kazum Guardians. Down he goes. Come on. If we can take out the Nazgul today and with the death of uh, Kamal and the rest of his Nazgul in the fort, so let's say move, um, we can make the, the forest will be a much easier to conquer. It's got a lot. The problem is that Nazgul is going to have a lot of hit points. It's already got Defense 29. I'm pretty sure the generals, they, they will have that as well for each individual general. Uh, sometimes I've seen that cavalry generals, if you charge in, suddenly sometimes get killed. Did that do nothing? That did nothing. Right, pull out of there. Uh, what are you, I'll use them just for um, anything else. Alright, you should be... You're, I know you're four-man pikemen, and you're not the best, but you should still be okay against the archers. Now I've got the Celsius in there, they're not... And the private reactors are there. Uh, I don't know where the bloody... Oh my god, they're being slaughtered. Alright, okay, okay, okay. Get Dane over them. Our army is tired. Yeah, we don't need... They're the miles away. We don't need that many men against... Yeah, I think we've won this. It's just a case of... Finishing off the units that need to die. These guys seem to be fine on quite well. Probably because they haven't realised that Agandau's died. Right. Right, that guy's... What are we find here? Oh, the Shadow Knights. No, it's just... Oh, it's Kamal. Right, we want him to die, so... Oh, no. No escape. No escape. Chase him down. Oh, he's moved over there. How does he move that far? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think these guys are still in the game, aren't they? Yeah, they've done right. Yeah, these guys are still ganked. I don't know if I'm going to save them, to be honest. Oh. And that'd be Kamal, I imagine. Oh, God. <laughs> yep, Kamal's dead. Charge! Right, sorry everything else, just charging these guys. Yeah, I lost this deal, guys. Yeah, I couldn't quite save them, unfortunately. Oh, this is a Sauron's will, it's still alive. This must be the last contingent of men actually still fighting. I think. Right, Foron's going to meet them in combat. Alongside the Wooden Realm. The Dale Army is completely kicked out of the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. That's rain. Oh no, here comes March. Arrow fire. Silphorn arrows are in. And here comes the rain fire of the elves. Crashing down. If you want to shoot him, go for it. Oh, they're routing. Oh, bye. <laughs> That's a shame. Alright. Hit the archers. At the back. Who are getting shot at. If they haven't really routed by the time we get there, that's fine. Look how our cowardly foe yeah, they're routing. It is time to press yeah, it says Regiment Erebor, actually, because they've spawned that region. Oh, sp uh, I say spawned. Been recruiting that region, which is, I think, it's quite interesting. So if we see these guys again, if they survive, it'd be quite interesting to see. Oh, yeah, those are the guys we fought ages ago. And they're still here. <laughs> um, I don't know how well... I'm not going to tell the AI enemy AI armies, but oh, no, I probably should, though, shouldn't I? If I can find them, I'll teleport them back to their home. Depends what they are. Uh, Gundabad's nearby, so I'm not really going to... They, they can get back to lands. The Angmar... Eh, they might struggle, so I'll probably just teleport them back. Um, or, no, I don't know, because I'm probably going to run them down and kill them off, though. Um, so Angmar, yeah, I, I could just... I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I could just get rid of Angmar. 
I'll see what I do. Aruna might teleport back to their own land, but it depends who's actually left. Because we've killed a lot of people today. Thanks to all, yeah, so foreign greeting, uh, le greeting friendly ones way past. So what I can see... Oh, there you go, Sova. I'll get my cavalry to finish them off. Lost a lot of cavalry, but the survivors of this battle, uh, the cell swords, they survived. The fireman Pike survived. A lot of our elite sort of survived, which I'm not really surprised about. There we go. The fireman Pike survived. Prior to survived. Uh, two units of our guardian survived. Alvin, of course, four of himself, who's still with us. Thank God. It was getting a bit close though with Agendower. Wasn't quite sure if he was going to survive that. Oh yeah, one of our iron guards made it. Which I think is quite funny. <laughs> there he is. Hope we can retrain him at some point. Hopefully some of his company will heal. Our travellers are with us. Some Dale Longbowmen, which is always handy to have some archers around. They quite well. The King two units of King's Warriors. Our Axe Warriors did quite good. I think they have high defence, don't they? Yeah, the defence is pretty good. Inspired very much for the Hobbit films there. Right. Is that a separate unit or is that? Oh yeah, it is. Uh, what is this? Oh yeah, run a few of those Shadow Rangers down. They're very dangerous in the battlefield, so if we can get them out, that'd be great. Um, so if we quite make it, well, that's a big contingent of men there. If we can kill them, that'd be great. Okay, do you have any cavalry? Do you? Our cavalry, our um, infantry will never make it, but the cavalry might. They're quick. Cause that's a big force to let go. But so far, this first episode has proved very enjoyable. I have had a lot of fun. That is the archers. Yeah, we can catch them. Where are we at? I'm down, boys. And they're gone. The day is ours. Let oh, that should be heroic, damn it. <laughs> I mean, it was one to one, but yeah, average victory. It wasn't a clear victory, average victory. What a battle. A lot of goblins survived, unfortunately, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I probably won't bother teleporting them. We just run them down and kill them off as we go. But King Mazog was slain. Athrog the Bloody was slain. Kamal was slain. Agandal was cut down. So was Rukar. However, we did lose Norway and Bran, unfortunately, so King Bard, so Bard now will become Bard the Second, King of Dale. Um, and Norway will be long remembered, and look, look, I imagine Avalon will probably take his place as a new High Counselor of the Avari. Thranduil survived, and Thorin made out there, alright, so that's good. We lost an awful lot of men, 900 remains. Um, oh. um, yeah, the Guardians got the, oh, who got the most kills? Looks to be the Guardians so far. Yep. 581 to the Guardians. Wow. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> they killed a lot of people. Foreign Zone coming didn't kill that many. I think the Temple Wars just took a while to die. Uh, 300 to the Private Axemen doing quite well. Dale Cavalry got quite a few kills. Not the other Cavalry didn't too well. Yeah, nice. The Sons of the Four. Did anyone... So what? what's healed? 88 to the Cells... Uh, Great. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy with any kind of troops there. But Private Axeman, Farman Pipeman, some healed there. Good. Some of our cavalry. Oh, 69 cavalry have healed. Good. That's good. Anything else healed up here? Not really, no. That's fine. That's the victory in the half. But uh, great cost. So that's why I didn't mind putting quite a few armies in. Because I know we were going to lose a bunch of them in the battles um, that were about to take place. So, yeah, 
I think quite looked at who died from the other. But I think Dorwini and Dale lost a lot of their men, a lot of their number. Frandamore did quite well. I think quite a few of his men survived, so he probably returned to. Uh, the Woodland Realm and prepared to probably fight off the rest of Dogledore in the south. Uh, we are secure the forts in the area and probably move to that fort in the northwest. Um, so that's what next battle, next episode will consist of. Oh, and the retaking of um, Xerxagil. Xerxagil? Is that? No. I can't remember the name of the Iron Hills place. Xerxagil? No. I'll go look at it later. It's bugging me now. I can't remember. Oh, it's the Minas Tirithar with Eowyn fighting off against uh, the Witch King. See, his, the Witch King's design used to be like a crown above his head. It's really weird. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill them all. The King of Dale was dead. With the death of the late king, his heir succeeded. I think it's the Rune army just fl flew off to the east somewhere. The local Khan of Rune is dead. The Lord Dolgador is dead. Angmar is dead. Lord of Gundamad is dead. Enemy camp sacked. All right, Dale survived, and yeah, a lot of our men did Okay, that's not too bad. I'll take that. <laughs> um, where do we move next? I suppose probably. Oh, we need to actually put men in the side of our capital. Um, I think for now we're chucking. I'm just thinking, when does that rune thing happen? Fifteen turns, twelve turns, about 30, 40 turns. Possibly rune might show up and kick ass. Um, will I get a free upkeep from there? No. No, am I not getting? Wouldn't I not get free upkeep? Hold on. Okay. <laughs> just, okay. Um. Fine. We're just chucking some air over Yeah. I don't know why they're not giving us free upkeep. Uh, we're moving this fort first. I don't know what sort of defense I'm looking at. Ah, see, some of the or forces retreated to that fort. I don't know if they retreated to that one, no. Uh, we'll see if the AI officers give us a hand. Probably not. Uh, I mean, to winning in this miles and miles. Um, but well, I'm going to end the turn. I won't do any of that yet because I'm going to get the Dwarf and Army to give me a hand with this battle over here. Which I think we could probably win. I don't think it's going to be too bad. We still got quite a good of a decent army left, so we can still put that to use. But again, we're fighting these guys, and they're going to take a while to die, especially if they hog the town square. All right, let's end our first turn. It's taken a while. This is probably the longest I've ever gotten to ending the first turn, the first episode. Yeah, Dale's return to Dale. Uh, the winning. Uh, I think the winning will find their own way home. They're not. They're not exactly two hundred miles away. And Frandewell's pushing the advantage against the goblins. Okay, right, okay. I don't take Whipperboard. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I'm better going to take Whipperboard. <laughs> I've spared, I've helped the elves, now I'm going to take Whipperboard under me, aren't they? Fuck it. <laughs> uh, we'll carry on a little bit, why not? Because this video it may already be quite long, but I think at this point, if we record for another 20 minutes, it should take us up to two hours. I'm thinking I do that, because we've had like a bet in about an hour worth no, oh, one second. Because we've had about two battles. Um, two big battles already. We're about to have another one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with them to stay here. Um, yeah, so my map information didn't quite work. So let's instead return uh, southeast. Uh, my spy, yeah, you can see it in jail, I suppose. Have a look at the... Battered up army of uh, Dale. Yeah, Jesus. Some of the men survived, though. Some of the decent elites survived. The floor insulation has been improved. And we fought together, so. Should help. I was worried I was going to say uh, some of the generals in the other bit, but yeah. Richard's faction, because again, we have a lot of money. Yeah, as you can see, we can't retrain and recruit anything for now. Um, oh, it's the floor in range. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm gonna get uh, what's his name to help me in a minute. No way he's gone though. Ah. He might have possibly split his army. Oh no, no, there is. I think it's fair to get him to come help. Dale's just lost their king, so they're going back. That's fine. It's fine. I attempted fate earlier, didn't I? Actually, by saying 
Oh look, Bard the second. Oh hang on a minute, not yet, because he's not king, and I tempted fate and said, Oh well, um depends how well the battle goes. <laughs> what happens he died. <laughs> um I'll teleport the other generals off camera. Actually no. Oh, I better probably do it now. Prefer. Okay, fine. We're sending uh, in larger so we can send Elrond back. I'll tear up with that other army. The remnants of uh, Kyrdan's army. For those wondering how to use a move character cheat, well, just use this. 245380. There you go. I would oh, crap. He split up his army. Oh, I hate the AI. Uh, do you know what? I just moved them both together. Uh, Kyrdan lost loads and loads of troops anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And the L's ready to get attacked anyway from that one. And Bran's going, uh, Bran. He's Bran in normal deck, but in uh, AGA they've moved a the time period of 3 0 10. So. It's fine. Uh, Dale, yeah, you'll find your own way home. Old Kellerborn. A brief look at the map there. Uh, Dunland has uh, new units and uh, new stuff in this version of the game. Because uh, they were made by someone in the AGO team, I think. And so they just had to, they were already in AGO before they were in DAC. Um, units, anyway. I don't know if, the, I don't think the scripts were or anything like that. Because, you know, I don't think that was the case. Just the units were in uh, AGO, which is alright for them. Club one returns. Uh, do I send the Dawinian army back home? Yeah. I do that. Yeah, Rune have strength in the number. The death of their king hasn't really made much difference. Oh, there is. Uh, Margos has become the Loki Khan now. Um, Avin was near the fort, so I'll put him nearby. He can move his the remnants of his force back there. Yeah, the winning. I think they lost a lot of men, but I think they did heal a lot of their number, which is quite good for them. Oh, no, I didn't do the. I didn't show actually. Uh, right. Where do you go? <laughs> Where do you go? There he is. Move character. Bjorn. Four zero seven three four. Four. I could say this battle, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's symbolizing their return. I'll send Bjorn back next turn. Oh yeah, I mean next two our, our battles will be the battle with um. Yeah, so we'll be. Well, we may as well fight him now. Yeah, why not? And I'll go to bed afterwards. <laughs> Let's start work till midday, so I might have a bit of time to fit in a bit more of this recording. So, quite enjoying this, and I always like to try and uh, kick off a few episodes in one go. Ah, Torvalin, there's no garrison because look, Legolas. I moved Legolas to Frandil's Halls, forgetting that they have defenders, a script that kicks in. There goes Prince Legolas. Got some elven defenders. Yeah, they get defenders, I think, the garrisons of places, which is quite cool. I'm interested to see if they will do anything, or they're just going to die. <laughs> I have a feeling they're just going to sit there and die. I could... I can't want to go in there and fight it, to be honest. Uh, 